Hello and welcome everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. Uh, we are at the second half of our show tonight. Uh, I'm your host, Etchy. We are doing a Pokemon Leaf Green Any% percent speedrun done by the wonderful Wave Warrior. Wave here uh, has is one of the best Pokemon speedrunners, period. Uh, has world record in basically every Gen 3 Pokemon category, except for this one, but he's still also really good at this one, so don't let that deter you. Um, and uh, we're doing a Phil show tonight because uh, Think Fast couldn't happen. Think Fast will be back in the future, so don't, so don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but Wave Warrior was kind enough to do this run for all of us here tonight, so I think I'll just go ahead and throw it to Wave to intro the run and get us started. Yeah, thanks for such a <laughs> glowing introduction. Uh, this is uh, Leaf Green, any percent. Um, I'm Wave Warrior, as Etchy said. I'm joined by two lovely commentators if they would like to introduce themselves really quick. Hi there, I'm, uh, I'm G Shark. I've also run this game quite, uh, quite a bit. I'm Swift. Um, I somehow keep getting pulled onto commentary for this game despite never running this game. So, uh, as you can clearly tell, I have so much experience, but it's okay because I have these very real commentary notes that Wave sent me, so I'll be perfectly fine, I'm sure. Right, Wave? Right, exactly. Uh, so, uh, that out of the way, uh, I figure we might as well just get right into yeah, this. Yeah, count us down. Um, so, on, uh, on go. Three, two, one, go. So... Uh, first things first, right at the start of the run, there is an RNG manipulation for um, our Squirtle stats. Uh, this game requires very strict Squirtle stats. I did the calculation earlier. If you pick a random Squirtle, it's about 0.14% to be runnable. Oh um, so we do RNG manipulation. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then explain it afterwards. Um, this manipulation is both frame perfect and there is also randomness that we can't account for so, yeah i was uh, gonna say like what what are the odds of hitting it with the rng manipulation <laughs> around 15 percent for me to hit it i have a backup <laughs> save uh, i checked the id right here for one yeah it is a it's a really annoying timing because theoretically you can do everything completely right and still not hit the manip because there's uh you have to track npc movements every time the npc moves it'll add one or two frames depending on how it moves so you have to track that uh you have to track those movements because it'll move the frame that you need to hit and if you don't do that properly you're not gonna even if you hit what would have been the correct frame you're it's not going to be the squirrel you want the pe the the NPCs can also move off screen when you can't see them. So that is one thing. We try to limit that as much as possible. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes there is just only so much you can do. So it's, it's a really reset heavy game at the very start. All right, we'll see if we hit this. It cannot be underestimated enough just how difficult this manip is because <laughs> a 1 in 60 frame trick, especially one where the frame isn't always consistent, is very, very tricky and difficult to hit. Nope. Close. Lonely, that is not it. We, uh, Let's take a look. Yeah. You're uh, looking for two one of late. three. Two frames late, yeah. Two frames late Tragic. is a pretty. Oh my god, you hit it! One. No way! <laughs> it's basically the most common uh, failure frame to get because it's the most likely outcome for if the randomness that you can't account for decides to happen. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, we, were look, yeah. uh, uh, we were looking for essentially one of three natures, rash, mo rash, modest, or mild. All of those are plus special attack. Rash is mi minus special defense, mild is minus defense, and modest is minus attack. Uh, all of those are gonna add a little bit of difference to the run. Rash generally being the best, but if it, as long as you don't get a crit on this fight, kind of doesn't really matter too much what uh, which one you have. Yeah, I yeah. believe most runners like Rash because there's mostly physical attacks in this game that you have to deal with versus special attacks. Like there's obviously like there's obviously Surge, which sucks as a special attacker to deal with, but I think most of the attacks I see in the game are usually physical, anyways that you want to worry about. Yeah. All three of the natures that are runnable are plus special attack, and um, we also have to have at minimum 30 special attack IV. For those who don't know, uh, there's something in this game called IVs, 
um, the way they work is for all six of the stats, you get a random value from 0 to 31. The higher the number, the better your stat is. Um, so we require a plus special attack nature, which boosts special attack by 10%. And then on top of that, we need one of the two best possible special attack IVs. So it is extremely uh, strict this route. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm killing a wild rat. Um, the way this experience route works out, we need to kill one thing on route one. One, we fight the optional in Brock's gym, and then we fight one more optional trainer in Mount Moon, and that is everything optional that we do in this category. Uh, killing that thing on Route 1 is important because it lets you get Water Gun when you finish Brock. I'm actually killing a second thing here. This is an optional strat. It uh, it makes Brock, the Brock section of the run, a little bit, a little bit nicer to work with. Uh, so... Because this gets us bubbled early, basically. So, uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, we, we, in a lot of Pokemon games, when you see like RNG manipulation, obviously you weren't able to do the RNG manipulation, but uh, would, you, would you still get these encounters if you did yes. get the RNG manipulation? Yes, uh, great point. Uh, the RNG manipulation in this game only, it ends once you get the Squirtle, basically. Um, RNG manipulation in this game is frame perfect. As I said, you need to, um, Every single frame, the, the RNG value changes. So you need to be doing things on the exact frame you want for the right outcome to happen. There are other games, like for instance, Emerald, uh, where you can sort of chain elements together. Uh, but this game is not, uh, the way it's set out, it's not really possible to, uh, to chain anything after getting your Squirtle. Yeah, it just be it becomes unfortunately way too difficult. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of NPCs, and it's you would be, like it's not really humanly viable to do. Uh, of course, you could task it. You could do uh, tool assisted speed run and just kind of make it so that everything works out perfectly. But it it is way beyond human viability, uh, especially when the, like just getting the Squirtle itself is something that people struggle to do. The best runners can have bad days where they go 30 minutes, an hour, not hitting it a single time. Uh, yeah. It's not the most common, but it can happen, which is crazy. Yeah, it's unfortunate how this game works with, because the NPCs can move around and you can't always, like sometimes they can move and you just have no idea they move. So um, it, it's just, it's frame perfect and then random on top of that for this game. And this game is kind of unique in that. For instance, again, in Emerald, um, there's no randomness involved, like no extra randomness. It's just a frame perfect input. And um, when it's just frame perfect, I can hit that about 50 to 60% of the time. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the randomness really kills this and leads to a lot of time just spent in the lab resetting until you <laughs> manage to get the uh, randomness to line up. Yeah, because you're able to practice anything that's consistent, but a lot harder to practice something when it's just inconsistent every time. Yeah, I think, I think it's pretty is, cool I, that. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I think it's pretty cool that 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 factor that also makes this like th this factor that makes this run like very miserable to grind out is also the factor that makes this one of the most unique of the older gen speed runs because there is that variability. Even though we are resetting for very high stat starters, you're not always getting the same starter. You're not always getting the same stats. So strats change. Uh, you kind of have to stay on your toes, run to run. The the calculations aren't the same every time because you always have different st uh, stats. And I, I think that's one of the coolest parts of this run, for sure. Yep. Most other early gen games have, uh, you get the same stat line every single time. Uh, if, in case you're curious, <laughs> there's a reason we uh, we can't do that in this game. And that's because most of the early gen Pokemon games, what you do is when you save and then reset the game, that usually lines up RNG in a consistent way. And that's usually how the RNG unit works. We can't do this in this game because the leaves on the title screen scramble the RNG. So it's like three different frame perfect inputs if you want to actually try to do that. And that's not feasible for a human. Actually, is this the, I'm trying to think, is this the only game outside like gen one through five where you cannot like, do, uh, where you can't do the, like kind of an extended or a save and quit. Like minute. a save and quit minute. Yeah. Uh, I don't know a yeah, lot of Gen Call One Five, <laughs> but it's it's true for Gen's One through Three. Oh uh, yeah, least. Call. Of. Yeah. Main, main Gen Five does games. save and quits. Yeah. It's pretty easy. 
By the way, uh, we breezed past it. Uh, I caught a Pidgey on Route 1. We need to catch two things. Uh, the Pidgey is for Fly, and then we need to catch something for Cut as well. Um, and that will be all the catching uh, that is done in this uh, in this route. Yeah, fortunately, they're available very early on. There's two po perfect Pokemon, Rattata and Pidgey, on Route 1. Um, it's not the biggest issue if you don't get it. There are backups it's later. Actu it's actually beneficial to just not get encounters on Route 1 and catch them later. Uh, but obviously, I encountered a Pidgey, so because I encountered it, I'm just going to catch it. Um, and then I'll get either a rat or a sand true later. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not Gen 5 where all HMs are optional. optional. Goodness, I cannot speak. Um, it's unfortunately with like earlier gens, you are required to have HMs in order to progress through the game. I'm sure many are very familiar with the abundance of HMs required in Gen 4, especially. Wait, please say it for Sammy. Thank you. <laughs> Um, oh, I forgot to tell. Uh, so the the way that uh, encounters work in this game is actually a bit different from most of the other Pokemon games. In most games, once you get an encounter, you get a certain number of immunity tiles. And uh, what that means is um, you get an encounter and then there's like two steps, three steps, four steps where you cannot get another encounter. Um, and then after that, you get a flat rate of maybe 10%. Uh, this game's different. Um, depending on the area, you after an encounter, you get either six, seven, or eight tiles of one percent for an encounter. Um, and then for every tile after that, it slowly starts increasing. Yeah, and so it's... that has the effect in this game. It makes encounters more consistent in general, uh, because the encounter rate is climbing. You're you're usually it's rarer to go long stretches without an encounter. I got a pretty good... I've gotten pretty good encounter luck so far this run. Yeah, see, was that a two or three fours? Uh, this was two encounters up to this point. Okay, yeah. Two encounters is is pretty good up to Sammy. There's, uh... I don't actually know how likely it is from here to end to not get an encounter. Okay, I did do a Poison Stink crit, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Simply did not get it. This Weedle loves to crit. And actually, yeah. not just this Weedle, but the uh, first three fights in the game, excluding the rival fight, are all fights that are very easy to die on. Sammy right here with his Weedle that uh, poisons you. Poisoning you is actually very beneficial because it helps you get into Torrent, which I'll talk, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the next Pokemon is a Sandshrew that has Sand Attack, which lowers your accuracy. And it has Scratch, which is usually bad because you're often at a health that you don't want to take damage. And then Brock is a lot. Yeah, so uh, Brock is the early game jail for this category. Uh, well, Brock's gym, including the uh, the trainer before him, Liam. Um, so Torrent's, or Squirtle's ability, for those who don't know, is Torrent. And what that means is if you're below 33% uh, of your maximum HP, um, then you will get a... 50% boost to your water type moves. That is a huge boost, and we take advantage of that a lot throughout this uh, run. Um, and for this gym, you need Torrent <laughs> for everything. Um, with Torrent, this is a five turn gym. Without Torrent, it's something like 10, 10 turns, something around there. It saves so much time, so you need to be low health going into this gym. But. Torrent. Yeah, Torrent saves yeah. not not just over this like this gym as well. You'll notice on the next route and throughout the entirety of the run, it saves a massive amount of time. Usually, a, like usually, it'll be like ha it can be save half the time or more nice. sometimes. And awesome, awesome Liam fight. Yeah. So yeah, the Sand Shrew Onyx combo is just a perfect storm of terribleness. Um, that just completely gets rid of all of our options, basically. Um, the Sandshrew we don't one-shot, so it gets a turn. It has three moves. Um, you'll notice I'm saving for all these fights, by the way. It just gives you an idea of how these, how risky this, uh, this gym is. Sandshrew has three moves. Scratch, Defense Curl, and Sand Attack. Defense Curl does nothing, Sand Attack sometimes does nothing, and sometimes is the worst thing ever. And then Scratch, you know, obviously deals damage. But taking that damage is really bad, because this Onyx is actually faster than you. It, it's kind of in, it's kind of insane. You don't think the giant rock snake's gonna be that fast. 
It's got a terrible attack stat, but not the worst, but like a slightly high enough speed stat just to be bad. Yeah. And you'll notice right here, getting up, uh, we're like barely at level 11, uh, like, or barely below level 12. It doesn't mat. It doesn't, level 12 doesn't even help. That's how bad it is. You'd have to go up to 13. Although yeah. that was a really nice Brock. When the fight looks like that, you're like, what were you so worried about? Yeah, why did you save? I don't get it. That was uh, a that, 9 that and 16 is range. faster than you. It knows Rock Tomb, which does a lot of damage and will always use it if it sees a kill with it. Um, and it's also not a guaranteed kill in Torrent. It's only in uh, about a 56, 57% range. Yep, which gets into damage rolls. Ha ha yep. ha, Yay. damage rolls are super, super uh, funny. So if anyone has played this game before, <laughs> have you noticed that uh, maybe you you get hit and you're left with slightly above half HP and then you get hit again and it kills you. It's like, what what the heck? I, I should have lived that. Yeah, there's an extra uh, random amount of uh, variance for how much damage a move can do. It can do anywhere between 85 and 100% of whatever its maximum calculated damage is. Um, and so those are those are 16 possible values, one for each percentage, and uh, only nine of those get the kill on, uh, on Onyx there. You'll notice then you, a lot throughout the run that yeah. even in Torrent, uh, there's just a lot of ranges that uh, there's not there's 10 and 16s, there's a good solid six and 16 later. Uh, there, like it, it pops up a lot throughout the run because even with Squirtle in Torrent and the highest possible attack stat or special attack stats, it's like it still struggles to get through everything easily. Yeah, and what's really annoying is uh, the the two problem Pokemon in the gym, which are Sandshrew and Onix. Both of them have plus special defense. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's I just, forgot uh, about that. We are a little bit lucky on Sandshrew. It's specifically a sassy nature, which is plus special defense minus speed. Without that minus speed, we'd actually be slower than it. So that that helps us out at least. But uh, yeah. Typically, you'd want to be in torrent for this section. On this route, if you have full torrent for all three trainers on this route, everything dies in one shot. Um, if you don't have torrent, um, you, it takes six extra turns minimum. <laughs> The torrent's really important. Uh, I do not have torrent because Onyx decided to be mean to me and use bind instead of tackle. Not really something I could have controlled. Okay, oh, now yeah. I do all, have torrent. All okay. of Onyx's attacks can miss, by the way, which can either save you from something that you, that you didn't think you'd live, or can screw you over in a situation where you didn't think you could get screwed over because he might miss a tackle or miss a bind and you needed that two extra damage just to be in torrent and then you don't get it and then you have to grind for torrent. You can lose plenty of time on that. Yeah. That, was, uh, that was a side. really good fight. I took a lot of damage and now I have torrent. So we're good. Uh, now that I have torrent, just all these bugs die in one hit. Uh, I don't think this was mentioned yet, but uh, we use Swordle for the entire run. Uh, that's going to be our main for the entire run. Um, there are no really other viable options. The only thing that's close is Charmander. Um, Charmander takes longer to get through Brock for obvious reasons, but it has it, it's generally good, better in the midsection, if I remember right. The problem yeah. is uh, Charizard has some real issues with uh, late game water types, specifically Lorelei and Lance. Yeah, the uh, I know Char uh, Charizard route is you'll you can see really the difference in how effective it is based on when it gets flamethrower, and that's at level thirty four. Once you thirty four flamethrower, you're kind of chilling. You evolve in two levels. You're a Charizard with flamethrower, and you cruise through, you cruise for quite a bit. But that means that beforehand you struggle a lot, and afterwards at the very late game on like Lorelei, Lance, and even a little uh, little bit Bruno, it's it, it's very difficult for a Charizard to get everything it needs. And even when the time, the t like you get a good timing on everything, it requires, if I'm not mistaken, a lot more good luck to go properly. Yeah, Charizard world record is something like three, three and a half minutes slower than a Squirtle record. Some of that is just due to less interest. Um, but it's at a top end, Squirtle is just better. 
Uh, you saw me might have do some funky movement there. I went past a walker. Um, there are some trainers that when they walk, they walk around randomly, and if they see you, they will fight you. Uh, so I did some movement there to uh, make it so that she couldn't see me. And the, you'll see some uh, some other stuff like that. Now we're actually right. coming up on one of the optional trainers. Yep. That uh, the last optional trainer that we're gonna have. Uh, there's actually four <laughs> four different options yeah, for optional trainers, uh, and this is yeah. This is the one that you actually want to fight when you're at a bit lower health because the, uh, these guys will not be doing damage to you. So if you're in a very low torrent, if you were at like six or eight, it's like six or seven HP or lower, this would be super good to do because you don't have to worry about anything yeah. damaging you. The problem uh, with the other fights yeah. is they're all risky. Um, they, they all are. have a chance to kill me. I miscalculated. I thought I would have torrent here after 16, but I'm actually one HP. Wait, no, I do have torrent. Never mind. This was right. Okay. Um, I can't do math, which is a problem, but. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, Th this yeah. is the safest fight, but I now because now that I'm evolving, I will be out of torrent. Um, yeah, there's two other fights where the Pokemon can damage you and you can die. Um, it's not necessarily favored for you to die, but it's not uncommon for that. It's to happen. not worth it to do it in a setting like this, uh, yeah. because I would I would have to save for them, and so it's just it's just faster to take the safer fight and then lose like one or two turns later. So now we have War Turtle. War Turtle's fun guy. He's actually, except for Surge, he's got a fairly easy, like stuff is relatively easy for him. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there, there are two things that uh, Squirtle doesn't like, and those are Surge's gym and every Oddish. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Uh, not even all grass types, because gra um, a lot of the grass types in the game, or, or the you run into some bell sprouts as well, which are able to kill with bite, which we'll get a little bit later. But Oddish and uh, our rivals Bulbasaur and Ivysaur are those are all bulky enough to be problematic and not going to kill one time uh, with just a single bite. So we have to use a move that we're going to be getting right after Rock Tunnel. Which is going to be Mega Kick, which is a we're, very we're get fun Mega move. Kick very soon. Don't you worry. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be spamming Water Gun, basically. Uh, quick Attack. All right, best option. Back in Torrent. Oh yeah, that that's such a like that Rattata is super clutch there. Sometimes, yep. uh, sometimes it'll just Quick Attack you and waste. At, that's only half a turn wasted, and you're in Torrent, and it saves like at least three turns over the ne like this fight in the next one. For literally everything on this split, just assume that if I'm not in Torrent, it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> in a <laughs> like in a lot of situations, that actually is the uh, case. Uh, it just Torrent makes things so much easier. But yeah. the thing is that. Uh, you, the later we get on in the game, the more we're going to have to be at, like, specific torrents. Poison, and yes. the issue is, yeah, like this, when something... This yeah, when you're in torrent and you get damaged, you are much lower health and you kind of have to heal, uh, which generally will be out of torrents. Okay, this is a problem. <laughs> I'm getting the worst combination here. This one to be out of torrent. <laughs> This grammar could do absolutely nothing to you. It could just harden and die in two shots, or it could do an, all of what just happened. Yeah, I, I got like the worst possible combination. Um, I'm so unfortunate. Again, it just loses time. These, these things, you know, they one shot in Torrent, two shots out of Torrent. I mean, Grimer is always a two shot. Three shots out of Torrent, actually. All right, tackle. That's the good thing. Back in Torrent, baby. Uh, in case you haven't been able to tell, a lot of this route is going to revolve around Torrent. Uh, this is, like, this fight is actually kind of the end of Torrent for a while. Um, it's going to come back uh, for some late game boss rush type stuff. Um, and it was really important to fight all those optionals to get level 18 right here. Uh, that, that's why we fought the optionals. We, we fought two of them. Oh, I need to repel still. Whoops. Um, we fought two of them to get level 13 after Onyx, and then one more to get level 18. Uh, right there. 
it's kind of nice how perfectly that works out to get bo to meet both of those level requirements with the optionals that are done because water gun is just strictly better than bubble it does twice the damage you're not getting water not getting a 40 base power move until 13 kind of sucks but we're able to, we we just kind of have to manage with that and 18 level 18 is significant not because of anything that actually happens at 18 but we're going to do a menu in a little bit where we want to be at a specific level and we need to be at at least 18 to do that but first we got to catch a we got to catch another buddy. We're looking yep. for Rattata or Sandshrew. Oh, I have a Repel up. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Repel normally doesn't last that long. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, nice Rattata. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to tell I didn't want to tell you to not Repel just so you didn't get one. But it's like it's kind of you got to do something there. Yeah, speaking of which, did you mention why you're running on Leaf Green version? Yeah, there's only one reason to run on Leaf Green versus Fire Red, and that's in this grass specifically. In Leaf Green, there's a Sand True that can learn Cut, and in Fire Red, there's an Ekans that cannot. That is the only difference between the two games. Uh, so they're on the same record. Now, in Fire Red Round 2, which is the other main category for this game, there is a big difference, and you have to run Fire Red. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. If you guys, if honestly, if you guys uh, find this re this game at all interesting, definitely check out Fire Red Round Two on the leaderboards. Um, just look at some of the PBs that are up there. Super interesting route. We were yeah, talking yeah. earlier about the vari variability on this game, just because of the stats. Round Two takes it to a whole other level with variability. For, for sure, I, I would recommend a VOD uh, by the world record holder. I believe their name is like Wavi Warrior. Something like that. Um, yeah, you can check that out. And if if you're enjoying this run at all and want to see more of this type of game, different, more Pokemon speedrun stuff, definitely follow Wave Warrior on Twitch. You can actually just follow him by mousing over his name on the Twitch title and click the little heart. And wow, you're following him. Wow. Isn't that? You can convenient? do that. You can do that. Yeah. Whoa. A good Twitch feature. Whoa. Yeah, that's insane. It's almost uh, like too convenient not to do if you're exactly, asking me. That's what I'm saying. I'm always yeah. It, it feels that. like it feels like it's like it's sh like everyone should be doing that. <laughs> Anyways, it's, yeah, it's misty a good time. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have Misty's to save this fun. fight. I did pick up a revive, um, but it's really bad if you lose your revive here. <laughs> it's not even yeah. like a guaranteed win of the fight if you like die and then revive. You can still lose the fight. So I'm gonna save for the next fight as well for the same reason. Uh, but yeah, the reason we need level 18 is so that we can rare candy up to level 20, which, uh, lets you deal enough damage to these Pokemon. Okay, good. The Staryu is like a 96% range to die in two bites. Uh, the Starmie is much worse. It's like 40% or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I think 40% not... is about right. Okay, well, I got a very bad roll there, so, uh, I'm going to use a Tackle here. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, if you leave it at low health, he'll Super Potion up to full. So, uh, that Bite, is, because Bite was basically impossible to kill from there, maybe a max roll killed, I'm not sure entirely, but, uh... Because Bite wasn't gonna kill, it's better just to take that extra turn than to, uh, get the Super Potion. I gotta say, the gym fights have gone pretty decently so far. Yep. Hey, this has been too smooth. Can you, uh... Can you <laughs> oh, don't you worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're getting right back into it. Can you add some drama to your run, please? I, yeah. before oh, we get into the next will provide. It's fine. Yeah. So first, but before we get into the next fight, I, I want to just mention, like, that did look very smooth. The problem the problem with Misty mainly is Water Pulse. Uh, yep. Looked like it didn't do much, but it can confuse. 20%, yep. 1 in 5 to confuse, and they use a lot of Water Pulses generally. So you saw him pick up an item earlier, the Persian Berry, that he put on uh, Squirtle, and he did that specifically for this. Like, specifically for this, on this one fight, people will still do that in PB attempts sometimes, to yeah. just because it's that worth it. Luckily, I do have a stat line on uh, this Squirtle, um, where I'm more likely to get Swift than Water Pulse, because um, miss the Starmie will use whichever move Swift or Water Pulse it thinks will do more. Uh, I'll talk about that, what it means by thinks it does more in a little bit, but, uh, uh, this fight is really annoying, because now we get to start using Mega Kick. Mega Kick, for those who don't know, 120 base power, really strong move, sand attack is really light. Um, really strong move, uh, 75% accurate. So, it just loves to miss. 
Yeah, 75% 70, accurate is... We're not going to be using Mega Kick for the whole run, uh, but uh, spoiler alert, it gets worse. Yeah. Uh, 75%, you're like, oh, you, you, surely you wouldn't use anything less accurate than that? We do. I promise. It, we don't like it, but we do. Uh, this fight, though, is, yeah, it, you're already noticing a lot that can go wrong. Uh, the Bulbasaur will often start with Sleep Powder, which right. just wastes a turn. The you have the seventy five percent chance just to hit the Mega Kick in the first place, and then you have to hope that it doesn't crit you with Vine Whip, or that if you don't miss, you're usually using the revive on here if you're getting it, because a lot of times you will just like miss Mega Kick, and you'll have to revive. That Bulbasaur is extremely dangerous. Uh, you don't one shot it. Vine Whip does a lot of damage. There's a lot of times where if you miss the Mega Kick, you're just dead. Uh, there's, I went into this fight at low health to try to uh, reduce the chance that Sand Attack would get used, because the AI does change up depending on how much health you have. Generally speaking, if you're below half health, you're more likely to get damaging moves, but there's so many caveats to that that I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure for this fight, fight specifically, like... Other, me and other runners have definitely noticed that if you po if you potion at like below from below half health to over half half health, you get sand attack a lot more. So it see I, it feels I like the AI kind of happening. I personally think what's happening is once you've damaged the Pidgeotto, its AI also changes to bigger sand attack. That probably makes more more sense. I I have no evidence to back that up. Yeah. I haven't dug into the code specifically for that, but I'm. That's probably what's happening if I was to That guess. would make more sense because there's no other fight in the game that really reacts like that. Yeah. Um, you can heal, like, most other... Anything else, you can heal out of uh, out of kill range for something, and it'll still use that one move that it thinks you're in kill range for. So, it would... That, yours thing makes a lot more sense. Uh, so, we made it past Rival 2, which is a very scary fight. Um... Nugget Bridge is mostly uneventful. There's There are three Oddishes on this split. Uh, we have to Mega Kick all three of them. First one is right now. Uh, there is one Oddish later that we don't have to Mega Kick. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, for now, this is kind of the first break you get. It's Once you get past Misty, it becomes Mega Kick the run. <laughs> I, I have to hit somewhere, somewhere between... 11 and 15 mega kicks. It depends on if you have torrent or not for some fights. Um, but yeah, you have to you have to hit too many mega kicks. <laughs> yeah, this one's super consistent. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know if you, any of you guys are stats majors or anything. But uh, fi like 15 mega kicks at 75 percent each, you're like usually going to miss a few. There are. Some that are a lot better to miss than others. Yeah, some the of them Bulbasaur, are Bulbasaur, really you don't like want to miss. That Bulbasaur is probably the most important one, because most of the time, if you miss that kick, you just die. Yeah, but like that Oddish there, uh, it could if you miss, it could use Sweet Scent, it could use Absorb, which isn't the biggest deal at this health. It's not even, you weren't even dead to a crit if you got Absorb. Yep. Uh, but there's definitely things that you Mega Kick, you're like, this has to hit or the run's over. And yep. at 75%, you just roll with it yeah it's an unfortunate aspect of this game but uh Squirtle, there's just nothing else for uh grass types and it's faster on average to mega kick everything than it is to just two shot all the grass types because a lot of the grass types even if they don't kill you they have really annoying move sets like the oddishes later their move set is uh sleep powder poison powder stun spore and then sweet sun so three different status moves, and basically every single one loses you an extra turn on top of, you know, already losing a turn from not one-shotting it. Yeah, but, uh, like we said, everything here is going to, until we get to the trainer with the Oddishes, basically the next 10-ish ten, minutes, pretty pretty much chill. Yeah. You finally and, get a uh, breather. Um, a large reason why Squirtle is so good. There's a lot of reasons why Squirtle is so good. But uh, for this section of the game, Water Pulse is a crazy move. It's 60 base power. We get Stab. We get an extra boost from Torrent. 
Uh, stab for those who those for those who don't know stands for uh, same type attack bonus. You get a 50% damage boost to any move that's the same type as the Pokemon using it. Uh, so 60 base power, effectively 90 base power because of stab, and then you get an extra 50% boost on top of that from being in torrent. It is yeah. very powerful for the mid game. This is our main move for like the next almost hour. It, yeah, Water Pulse does a lot, and it's one of the big reasons that there's nothing else that really competes as heavily, because Charmander do, like doesn't. There's no like flame wheel kind of in between move. It has Ember, which is 40 base power, same as Water Pulse, and then it doesn't really get another f fire move until like level 34, which is a, like a, quite a while in. And that's Flamethrower, which is 95, so it doesn't have this kind of mid-level move uh, that can really bridge the gap between those two and be more helpful and helps cure more one-shots. Yeah. Other and thing, then, though, Obviously, uh, Squirtle also gets Surf later, which is going to carry us for the end game, And then it also learns Blizzard, which is what helps us with the late-game grass types. Yeah. And then I think uh, you can never underestimate how good Bite is. Bite does a lot of heavy lifting for us, surprisingly. So uh, the, right before this, I fought a hiker. There's a choice between two different hikers. Um, you have to fight one of them. I fought the one that it takes slightly longer right now, but it saves time in the long run. I'll, I'll save that time back later, basically. Um, and the reason is it gives me slightly more experience now, which I can take advantage of before it evens back out later. Um, yeah, can we get a can we get a re-explanation of torrent for uh, for those who've just joined in from from Swift? Yeah, sure. That's a that's a pretty important thing. Uh, so Squirtle's from ability Swift. in this game is oh, you want Swift to do it? Yeah, I want Swift to explain. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so torrent is where your HP is below one third. Um, it boosts your water type attacks by fifty percent, which is really really nice. Um, each starter has their own type specific ability for that so fire type it's called blaze grass type it's called overgrow um it's just super super useful in the run especially early game runs or well not early game early gen runs i should say because in later gens uh you're just given so many free heals you take you can't take advantage of torrent and that kind of stuff quite as much unfortunately how many free heals are in sword shield <laughs> oh <laughs> god that's a good question every single before and after every single gym leader, like every single rival fight. Uh, so the one of the main benefits of fighting the slower hiker earlier is I can water pulse this in torrent instead of mega kicking. And then I miss the range anyway. Ooh. But uh, <laughs> it, it's that is was 13 and 16 to kill, which is slightly more likely than the 75% that mega kick is to hit. I do have to mega kick this one because this one has higher special defense, and I missed the mega kick. Oh boy! <laughs> oh, the, the things are happening right now. I'm gonna push him. No, you deserve this because your gym fights are really good. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> don't want to burn the revive right now, so I'll just punch him. Yeah, for like, you get there's a lot of like most fights. There's a chance for something to go wrong. Like a world record right now is. Two, two hours at two hours zero minutes I think 56 seconds correct yes um that like if you were to do it and get like most like say 80 percent good luck that would be like a one fit like you'd save like two minutes on the world record well I mean you definitely need you need it in the right places y you need better than 80 percent luck in general this, these this game is extremely optimized. Uh, to the point where you just need to risk so many fights and hope for the best. Um, because this is a setting where I cannot just reset if something goes wrong, I need to account for that, which is why I got the revive. So long as the revive is in my back pocket, I basically don't have to save from this point. Um, so <laughs> it, it's beneficial to not risk the revive if I don't have to, which is why I potioned. It, it actually saves time from not having to save. Actually, did we talk about late surge route yet? Uh, not yet. I was going to do it later. Um, okay. But 
Uh, coming up now is where in an actual, like, any percent world record attempt, you would go down to the SSN and then fight Surge. Uh, fighting Surge early is the single most likely fight in the entire run to kill you, because you are at level and Electric-type moves hurt a lot. Um, and uh, you're slower than the Raichu, Raichu loves to spam double team, it's just an awful fight. Um, I don't want to do that. So I'm actually just going to delay Surge until much later. And I'm going to come back when I'm Blastoise, and then the fight is completely free. It loses about 45 seconds over, you know, if you get a good early Surge. Um, but it's on average, you would lose more than 45 seconds <laughs> by, well, maybe not on average, but a lot of the time it would end up being slower just from doing early surge. Uh, there was there was a tournament for this game recently, and in the finals, uh, Amoeba, one of the contestants, died to early surge, I think, four times in a row. And that's honestly not even that's that ridiculous. It's so, not crazy. <laughs> you're, you're like you're like somewhere between 30 and 40 percent to die if you do it early. But if you do it later, guaranteed win. It's actually impossible to die to that fight if you do it right. And how, how much time does it lose again to do it late? About 45-ish seconds. Okay. Yeah, Assuming so, you know you get a good early surge. Yeah, you can still... It, it makes things a lot more consistent. There's a few things that uh, become a little bit harder, but the payoff is just worth it if your goal is to finish a run as opposed to finish the fastest possible run you can do, because it makes it more likely to finish even at the sacrifice of some time. Alright. So, uh, now is the end of, uh, Orient for now. Hopefully we get it back soon, but, uh, Boat Rival we need to heal for. So, uh, we're not going to take the center, we're actually going to uh, use the free heal on the boat. A bit faster that way. Boat Lady is... Boat Lady's so clutch. Yep. It's exactly the same as the center, it's just faster. I mean, look at how fast this is. Also, it's on your way there instead of yep. having to like go a little bit left. Uh, uh, Pokemon Center's on your way there too, I guess. Um. So I did lie a little bit. Uh, I am going to have to do one more save with the revive. Because, again, this fight relies on hitting Mega Kick. And if you miss too many kicks, you can just die no matter how, how many revives you have. So, uh, Mega Kick, it, it's a great move. Wait, so you're not going to save on uh, Alicia? Or uh, Martha? Not with the revive. Oh, okay. And you, yeah, you, de don't you definitely don't need need to. There's a couple trainers coming up uh, on the rock tunnel split that can be oh, nice. problematic. That's a range, uh, by the way. That, that is not guaranteed to kill. Yeah. Hey, oh, Mega nice. This is like the second worst hit to this. Poison, Poison powder. powder. That is very rare. It's not strictly bad as long as I don't miss another oh, oh. kick. <laughs> uh, Alright. Definitely want to do this now. Winch. Oh god, no, really? Oh, that's, that's that is really not okay. a good combination uh, to have. This is a situation. Is like this is gonna be really hard to recover from. Uh yeah, we might we might have to end up using that save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really that's really rough. That's a lot of that. Bad luck. Po poison powder you see way less often than sleep powder. I think, which I think I'm fine. Po poison powder isn't no. always worse. Uh, but if you miss two mega kicks and then get leech seeded, it is definitely worse. Oh, uh, this is unfortunate. Uh, He's hitting all his moves. Happening? <laughs> sleep powder and poison powder are both also 75%, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, All right, mega kick of your life. Oh, okay. We're not out of it yet. <laughs> no. Um, this is... 13 to 16 from Cadaver. This also has quick attack. I do not have super potions yet. So, uh... Okay, I'm gonna play it safe. And you just One have to crit. hope... 
No. Does it, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, quick, okay. no quick attack? Okay. We're fine now. <laughs> Spooky. But Are you was... out of potions or do you have one left? I have one left. Okay, that's what I I've used I... so many potions this run. That's, yeah, that was a lot. It shouldn't matter for the most part. I, I shouldn't really need potions past this point. There's Maybe. Like one spot where it might be helpful. <laughs> Maybe two. Hard to say. I can make it work, but uh, yeah, that is uh, that is how you don't want that fight to go. In case you were curious, it started off so well. I quit the fight and got the range. Generally, any fight uh, where you're seeing any fight with boat the boat rival or the previous rival fight at the bridge where you're seeing Leech Seed, it's not going great. Yeah, uh, Leech got, Seed's really just I actually not got ideal. all four moves that fight. Oh, dang. oh, you're right. Dang, that's. That's ridiculously unlikely. Oh, you don't both, see of that my, uh, both of my helpers are dead, so now my revive is worthless. That's good. <laughs> it's okay, you boat can pick heal, up yeah. the... Uh, I'm actually just going to take the boat heal here. Yeah. Again. <laughs> By the way, chat, if you have any questions about anything that's going on during the run, definitely feel free to throw those in the chat. I'll, uh, I'll take a look every once in a while and forward them along. Feel free to post them. Boat healing here is not ideal, because I actually wanted to keep Torrent for this section. Um, but it's fairly minor compared to, you know, not dying. Yeah, the, I mean, the other option is keep it, uh, he could play, he could play it risky until the next point where he can get a revive, which is either Rock Tunnel, which is a little out of the way, or in Safari Zone, which is a little bit further, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm it, gonna buy revives yeah. in, um... It called uh, Lavender Town. Right. Okay. I was, I was making sure I didn't forget to get this, which I've done before. Oh yeah, this is the this isn't the bike. This is the bike voucher, so that we don't have yep. to pay a million yen for it for a bike. So I have a, I have a question from Chad of uh, how do you, how do you recommend practicing like speed running this game like learning it getting better at it etc. And we and we can open this up as like general like le uh, learning Pokemon speed running question to all the, mm -hmm. the commentators. Yeah. So uh, my first piece of advice would be uh, join the Discord servers. Um, there are different Discord servers, roughly split along the console the games are on. Um, not exactly, but. Uh, it's close. If you want to find the right Discord, look up the game you want to learn to run, and then there should, like, go to speedrun.com, and there should be a link to the, the relevant Discord server on there. A lot of great resources there. And then, uh, if you want to learn, the best thing to do is just, just start a run and learn as you go. Like, obviously, practice some beforehand, but uh, the hardest run is always the first one. Um, so, like, just do enough practice to where you trying to know the route, and then do a run, and then get better from there. That's my advice, at least. Others might think differently, but... I, I mean, that's that's pretty... It's pretty solid advice, for sure. Uh, a game like... Like, games like Pokemon, uh, with a couple exceptions, generally aren't the biggest, like, execute... Like, they're not insanely hard execution-wise. Uh, there are some, some games where the execution is harder than others, uh, Emerald's one of them with the mock bike. So, but uh, with a game like this, where the execution is not super difficult, aside from the Squirtle Manip, which is kind of just something else, I would say that the best thing to do is kind of just yeah, keep doing like learn the ru learn the run, keep doing runs, have notes open, and you're gonna be able to remember stuff best once it happens to you, and once you're kind of just familiarizing it yourself with it to the point that you don't even need notes it's just all in your brain which does take a while and it is a little time inse intensive but it uh, for me and i know multiple other people it's been the best way to do things yeah m most of pokemon games usually have one or two tricks that are you know tight frame windows typically for rng manipulation uh and the rest of the category there's nothing really difficult in terms of tricks uh, and also, um, there, every single game has a category where you don't need to do those, you know, frame-perfect tricks. Uh, you can do it manipulous. Uh, how popular those categories are vary by the game, uh, but they do exist for every game. 
you know, for, the, for those who want to uh, tr try the game in kind of a more pure, uh, kind of like how you're playing as a kid kind of sense. <laughs> uh, the manipulous categories exist for that. What about uh, what about you, Swift? Personally, I found the best way for me to practice was usually by like using save files. I know there's practice save files for a lot of the speedruns for these games. I'm sure Fire Red Leaf Green has them. Because generally, I find it's easier to split up um, sections just so you kind of can practice certain ones a bit more. If you find you struggle on them a bit more than others, yes, playing through the route is also very important. But like, I know, for example, like Ruby Sapphire Emerald has very intense movement sections. And I know this game can kind of have some movement sections that are a bit tricky too, especially stuff like spinner passes. Um, that can be kind of overwhelming to someone new. Well, it's just menuing, stuff like that, managing uh, your torrent. It's very helpful to have those different save files just so you can kind of swap between them as necessary. I absolutely don't want to discount the value of practice. It's essential. Um, and you should practice before doing your first run, but I also don't want... The best way to... Um, how do I say this? There's stuff that you're not going to learn until you actually encounter it in a live setting. Um, when you can do it at your leisure, some things just don't come up. Oh, yeah. Um, and so <laughs> by, by repeatedly doing, you know, actual setting runs, it, it, you'll improve very quickly. <laughs> um, but yes, practice is absolutely essential as well. And like you said, there are, there are definitely sections in some games where you kind of need to practice them. Whoops. Um, wow, well, I am doing poorly at this. Uh, in case you haven't been able to tell, uh, we do not get Flash. Uh, I have the entire layout memorized, so don't need it. You just, he's that good. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's really, it's really not as, not, like, not that hard. Uh, there's a, like, there's one spot where uh, you have to be a, a little bit hard at a top, that's a little bit hard to do at a top level just because you have to do a couple of quick inputs. But that's still relatively, like, relatively not that bad. Uh, this fight is one that you, I would have considered saving for, but I'm at basically full health and also have the revive. So it's, it would be extraordinarily unlikely to die to this. That's a good roll. This is a ranged two shot. Mega Kick doesn't even kill this on this route. This is too bulky. Thank God it's not a gloom. It's not a gloom already. This thing, however, does die to Mega Kick, right, and we hit it. Yeah, kind of the best Every fight. Every single get. Oddish in this game is a problem. Very scary Pokemon. Evil. As well as the Bulbasaur line. This is every single one causes issues. They both have red eyes. They have evil in their eyes. And they th and they throw some tr strange powders at you that just like, you're like, no, I don't like that. It doesn't taste good. Fortunately, I think no, we're not done with the Oddishes. There's nope. one more. Correct. And there's also Eradicate, I have to do. Oh, yeah, uh, the Eradicate. But then well. that will be the end of the Mega Kicks. <laughs> so far, I've missed... Uh, five? The other four or five. It was Bill Split Oddish. I missed two on the Ivysaur. And one more on the earlier Oddish, so four. That's not, that's honestly not that bad. It's below average, but it's fine, kind of. Where I missed the kicks was a problem, as you oh, saw yeah. on, uh, on Ivysaur. Missing two kicks on the same fight is generally... It's rough. Wor yeah, generally worse than missing, like, one here and one there, except on, like, the super necessary fights. We use an elixir here, basically just for Mega Kick. We only have five uses total. Uh, so. 
I did say that we're almost done with the kick, but we actually do use kick for one more place. Uh, and that's on Lavender Rival. However, we have an X accuracy up for that fight. So Mega Kick is actually 99% to hit on that fight. Yeah, it. Uh, once we get access to the X items, which is going to be once we get to Celadon City, it, op it opens things up a lot, so yeah. we... Yeah, you're able to do, instead of two-shotting things, you're able to set set up with X items. And we get uh, quite a few of those. So, hope with just one shot for the remainder of the run, because we have un we have enough money to do that. And are you going to be selling the nugget to get some more? Some yeah, extra ones? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, my movement has not been great here. <laughs> But, the, but yeah, like uh, like you were saying, the Mega Kick with an X accuracy, 99%. It is the, it's the only fight you use uh, an X accuracy and Mega Kick together. So it's pretty rare that people miss a Mega Kick on that fight. And you generally don't, you only use it like two, maybe three times. I have lost so runs to missing the 1%. But it, it's <laughs> still possible. Even when things are 99% to go right, that means there's a 1% chance for things to go terribly wrong. Okay, so what you saw me do right there was called a run to bike. The way spinners work in this game, first off, spinners are trainers that can spin around and if they see you, you have to fight them. We don't want that. We want to avoid that. Um, if you try to run past them, they will always spin to see you. They can, quote unquote, hear you try to run past them. But that can actually work to our advantage. If we run near them, we can force them to look a certain way and then um, get on the bike and bike past them before they're able to spin back towards us. Uh, they cannot hear us on the bike. They can only hear us running. So that's what you saw right there. I, I ran to force him to look down and then got on the bike and biked past him on the right. It's a fairly lenient window. That one's only a little tricky because you're doing it in the dark. They kind of just have... Yeah, you don't, really, you have, don't have visual cues. You just have to uh, kind of get a feel for how the inputs work. Yeah, the run to bike you use in a couple different spots. Uh, you would have saw it, saw it earlier on the hiker, the hiker before rock tunnel, and God, there's one other. There's at least one other, right? I'm... Yeah, it, I just did it. There's, wait, there's, there's, only, the, there's, there's only, only two? two. Yep, there's only two. Am I crazy? Oh wait, I'll tell uh, the other ones in like round two. Yeah, in round two, uh, which is effectively the post-game version of this uh, game, uh, there are a few extra things you have to bike pass. I am just having some difficulties with biking right now. Um, so most of these fights are fairly trivial. You know, I, I had to hit a couple kicks, but wasn't in much danger. These fights right here are basically trivial, except for one more kick I have to hit. Squirtle's pretty strong for this section. So a question from chat, do you play this on an emulator? Nope. Uh, it's actually an interesting console. question. This, yeah, yeah, this is on console. Uh, yep. We use the Game Boy Player attachment for the GameCube. Yep, and that's and, why my uh, game feed is so crisp. Yeah, it actually, uh, there's a program called GBI, Game Boy Interface, which actually makes the program look uh, or make, not the program. Well, I am going to the... cut you off. Uh, right here is an oh, extra yeah. thing, safety for the route. I'm going to go right here to pick up a Lumberry. Uh, this is going to matter for Koga specifically and basically nothing else. I love uh, the Lumberry shreds. Uh, I'll talk about it later when I get there. But, uh... Uh, but yeah, the so uh, it's most this game is mostly run on console. Uh, people do run it on emulator. The uh, only the emulators are not unfor uh, they're unfortunately not super accurate to console they uh we say that it's like i think what about 25 seconds is saved by playing on emulator but that's still like not a super like accurate calculation so people like most people will be doing it on console when they have that available oh i forgot to buy the revives <laughs> that's fine i can pick a revival who needs them yeah, you just don't die. Easy. 
what's uh, what's happening story wise? What are you doing here? Uh, so, uh, for some reason, uh, the police are having trouble finding where the rocket hideout is. Uh, so we're gonna take a detour and go to the rocket game corner to see if maybe the rocket hideout is the rocket game corner. Um, you wouldn't believe it, it is. Uh, so we need to go through here and, uh, just clear out Team Rocket. Yeah, someone in chat is asking what, uh, what control you're playing with. Uh, I am using a Game Boy Advanced SP uh, as an adapter to connect it to uh, GameCube. But you're not dual wielding? Thing? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. Dual wielding is um, where you can use both the GameCube and the SP at the same time. I know lots of runners use it, but then there's some runners who just use only GameCube, which I don't know how you do that with that D-pad. That is horrible to deal with. It's so <laughs> squishy. And then there's some runners who only use SP, and I also don't know how you do that. It's so tiny. <laughs> do you, uh, so do you what do I thing? actually do is I, I put my SP flat on the table. Yeah, I don't hold yeah. it. I, <laughs> I effectively treat it like a keyboard. I, 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 if you're going to play on SP, you kind of have to do it like that. That's how Pokeguy does it, too. That's how Pokeguy um, does That's what yeah. I learned it from. Because, um, like... If, if you're pressing, if you hold it in your hands and you have like, even if you have like small hands, like the buttons just like hurt so much more and do much so much more damage to like your wrist and your your arm. If you if you use if you use it the way you're intended to as a fully grown adult, <laughs> it's, it's really spread really out for me to then. use. Yeah, and there's also there's tricks in this game where you need to like very quickly switch between like uh, A B and select, and that's really hard to do if you're holding the controller. Uh, like hold it, hitting a D-pad direction while also switching quickly between A, B, and select. Um, there's not really a good way to do that quickly. You just have to really quickly move your uh, your thumb over. But when you have a flat on the table, you can just kind of use your your uh, middle finger for A and B. I, I what I do is I have my index and middle finger on A and B, and then when I when I know I need to move to select coming up, I'll move my index finger over over to uh, select, but keep my middle finger over at A and B. Yeah, I haven't thought about it, but I should probably relearn. I've probably relearned this game actually with the SP flat on the ground because I actually, <laughs> like a maniac, do hold it. And now, now I'm like more concerned. Like, man, I hope this isn't accident. Like, just subtly giving me carpal tunnel or something. Yeah, the the the, the hand pain and like wrist strain I got when when I first ran this game, I used an SP and I just held it. The the I I never experienced like pain like that ever running a game <laughs> and I speedrun a lot of different Pokemon games and it was it was absurd uh, and I, I eventually switched to dual wheeling and that solved all my problems but uh, I, I've luckily never yeah. had a campaign someone yeah. in chat is asking what the moonstone is used for excellent <laughs> question absolutely nothing uh, it's actually impossible to advance further without picking up that moonstone it blocks I think it blocks the only path forward yeah it it blocks, like, it's kind of weird to just have an item, that, like a random item that blocks the path forward that you need to take. It, um, you can, like, it's used in round two for stuff, but, yeah, it's considering we're not catching any more Pokemon and the ones we have now don't evolve with Moonstones, uh, it is used as, a uh, bag space that we, ev and we eventually toss it just to make save time with scrolling up and down the bag so we're not passing a random item that we don't need. Alright, so we're coming up really soon on about the halfway point of the run, a little over an hour in. So, I figure after uh, the Giovanni fight, we'll just take a really quick break. And good. Uh, right here, we use our remaining rare candies um, in order to get level 36 and evolve into Blastoise. So for a normal any percent route, what would uh, this is kind of almost right where it syncs up. Normally we would be at 34 right after that fight, and we would use two rare candies to get to Blastoise at 36, and then do this fight at 36. Whereas right now we are at 33 and using three rare candies. The so basically the only difference is right now we haven't fought Surge. There's a little bit extra uh, experience, but it uh, ends up being less experience overall because of some other things yeah and, it's the, yeah. the way the two routes differ is just where you use the candies basically uh which you have to shift slightly because of uh when you fight surge 
if you think about it, a rare candy always brings you up to the next level. So the the higher level you use a rare candy, the more valuable it is. This fight, we don't get the surge experience early, so we need to delay our rare candies as long as possible to get the most out of them. Whereas when we do fight surge early, we can use one of our rare candies a bit earlier and have a bit more experience for the mid game. Uh, this candy sounds pretty annoying. Let's fake out for one. Uh, and then it has Tail Whip, Bite, and Mega Punch as the three moves. Mega Punch hurts quite a bit. I do want to take damage. I need to be lower than this. But, uh... Mega Punch right here would not actually be the worst. Uh, but okay, the Tail Whip. Oh, alright. Well, but... we'll be able to get down later, but it's just a little unfortunate. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna just, uh, count down to, uh, when I'm pausing the game. Um... And then we can take a, a quick break. So, uh... Three, two... One, and pause. Awesome. Thank you very much, Wade. We're going to take a quick little break before we get back to the second half of this amazing Fire Leafing run. Uh, before I do that, I want to make a couple announcements. One is uh, GDQX starts tomorrow. Oh my gosh, October 20th through the 22nd. Uh, if you don't know, uh, GDQX is going to be live streamed from TwitchCon. It's a mini GDQ event. Uh, it's going to be here on this Twitch channel all weekend. Use exclamation point GDQX in Twitch chat to find out info and check out the schedule. And then also that uh, Awesome Games Done Quick 2024 will be live in person January 14th through the 21st in Pittsburgh. Uh, use exclamation point AGDQ in Twitch chat for more info on that. And you can also check out the games list, which got released last week over at gamesonquick.com. And uh, again, remember to follow Wave Warrior if you're enjoying the stream and the run. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. I am your host, Etchi. We are in the middle of an amazing fire bread, leaf green, technically leaf green, uh, any percent speed run uh, by Wave Warrior here. If uh, Before we actually get into it, I want to make a couple announcements. One is uh, if you missed out on any of our other Hotfix shows, be sure to check out the VODs on youtube.com slash games done quick. And if you are watching on YouTube, hello. Uh, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also go to twitch.tv slash games done quick. We're interested in looking at our live content, and I'm just going to give it back to Wave. Wave, just just count us back in. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, on go. Three, two, one, go. So, we have just made it through Giovanni. Ideally, we're in Torrent Cure, uh, which we are not, because I was forced to take an extra bed heal because of the absolute amazingness of our boat rival fight. Uh, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it just loses a couple turns. And then uh, there are backup strats to get down to Torrent, because it is really important to get Torrent coming up soon. Uh, but we have some backup strats for that. Uh, right now we're going over to pick up Fly. The main reason Late Surge is not viable is because uh, Surge is what lets you use Fly outside of battle. Um, I cannot Fly right now because I have not been in the Surge gym yet. So I'm going to have to bike back to Surge, which I'm going to do in a moment. First, going to do some shopping. Basically, all the shopping for the rest of the run. Yeah, uh, he's going to be talking... He's going to be grabbing the X items that we were talking about. Uh, X items are yeah, really only strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. X items, if you've seen any Pokemon speedrun, uh, aside from, like, Gen 1 or... Are they in Gen 2? I don't think so. All of them use. They're all like. Oh wait, no, no, they two. are in Gen One. I'm, su I'm, I'm dumb. And in Gen yeah, one. no, in every, yeah, just in every Pokemon speedrun, basically, you're gonna be seeing uh, the someone use X items because X items are insanely good. They they get even better in later generations. They're super necessary to make the a lot of these runs work, just because otherwise they uh, what being able to set up on one Pokemon and then use that Pokemon to sweep the rest of the fight is so much faster than say three to three shotting all of the Pokemon. It's yep. like e on just the elite four alone, uh, aside from the fact that you're more, you'd be way more likely to die and lose the run. I imagine it would save a solid, like Aquaferia and Nidoran move around minutes. randomly. And it's really fun when they decide to just, Say, no, you're not going there right now. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're going to bike back to Surge right now. 
that we get access to fly. Uh, nope, this way. <laughs> Fortunately, Surge here is very, very free. Um, uh, messed up my movement a bit there, so I <laughs> have to go a bit slow to save it. If you're off a tile, there you hit an optional, which is obviously not ideal. Okay. So, uh, Surge's Gym Puzzle is just a, you know, the pinnacle of game design. It's just, it takes so much skill to do this well. Um, it, it's, it really is the separator between who's good and bad at this game. In case you couldn't tell, I'm being sarcastic. So, how this puzzle works is essentially there. I mean, of, oh the, of the 15 available trash cans, one of them has the first switch, and it can be any of those 15. The second one will appear when you find the first one, and it will be to it'll be one of the trash cans adjacent to the first switch, not yep. in the diagonal, not diagonally. So there's some that some trash cans where you can have four adjacent, some with three, some with two. If you're lucky, you get one with to but regardless you save and if you reset then the second the second one is still locked in so you can just recheck yeah so it's, the best strategy is just search till you find the first one and then save and keep resetting until you find the second one that's uh, a bit unfortunate so uh, ideally you have torrent here which i do not have so i have to use an x special instead both torrent and x special give you a 50 percent boost um so it, it's effectively the same result, but I lose one turn. And uh, notice how this fight is free now. <laughs> yeah, did you, I mean, to be did fair, you describe the, how this yeah. fight goes normally? Yeah, normally what you do is you go into this fight, the Voltorb is a range, you're slower than the Raichu. In order to two-shot it, you need to Water Pulse plus Mega Kick it. So you have to hit a Mega Kick through Double Team, sometimes also through Paralysis, and with all of that going on, Shockwave does like 45 damage. And your max health is like 75. It's great. I I generally I generally refer to it, it as the only fight that you're in the game that you're favored to lose. You're still more likely than not to live, but a lot of that includes a lot of time loss. Yeah, you do you do end up you do you do end up fine te technically more likely than not. I just like to say it's to you're it's the only one you're more than likely to lose just because it really helps emphasize just how much this fight sucks and it's not like it's probably the worst fight in the game for sure it's not even close well okay it is close the other fight it, yeah is that's the thing it's it sucks that bad and it's still like debatable which is crazy there's, there's a, lot a lot of bad, bad fights, fights in this, in this game run. I don't yeah know. Yep. S surge and koga are especially bad but there are a lot of bad fights in this run. <laughs> I actually do have to save here because I set up X items on this fight, and if I have to revive, I lose all my X items. And it's it becomes a problem. Uh could be good here. If, uh, um, because my health is feel free to ask. Yeah. Sorry, God. Uh, because my health is so high, I'm doing an alternate strat. Oh. That's annoying. Uh, I'm gonna bite Ivysaur here. I wanted to take damage, my plan was to take on the Ivysaur, but I took a bit more than I expected. Okay. This is just a weird situation, but... It's fine. I'm gonna stall on this Gyarados to get for it. It's really important I get for it for this upcoming section. Yeah, this is this is what uh, we were mentioning earlier, where it's not even just important to have torrent, but be at like try to calculate and be at very specific levels of torrent. And this, it's problematic because you want to be at a level, uh, you want to be at an HP where at level 40, 40 you're a going 42 to 42 on this route. Oh yeah, 42. Yeah, you're right. 42 on this route. Uh, 42, you're going to have Torrent, because that's going to help make uh, the Koga fight a lot better. And same with the regular Any% percent route. Uh, it, does, yeah. it makes the Koga fight, like, way more able to go faster, but still, like, 
uh, still problematic. You need but, torrent for Koga, and yeah. it's it still sucks. It because <laughs> believe it or not, uh, being at low health means you're more likely to die. Uh, shocking, I know, but uh, it's just it, it gives too much of a boost to our power that we just have to take the risk. It's a lot worse if you're not in porn, because setting up on Koga is problematic in its own right. Yeah, you can... Or, like, you just never want to... Like, the perfect Koga fight is a four is a four turn, but that would involve one crit and one, hitting one 6 and 16 range yep, in Torrent. Which I've gotten before. It feels really good. <laughs> oh, it, oh, it feels just, so good. When you just get a perfect Koga. Koga kills a lot of runs because of how risky you have to play it. That's annoying. That's a, that's another spinner. I was doing a strategy there. Uh, basically, every spinner in this game operates on timers, and it's there's a lot of complicated stuff to it, but the basic idea is they can only do something once every 32 frames, about half a second. And it takes 16 frames to walk a tile, uh, 8 frames to run, and 6 frames to bite. Uh, so if you can line yourself up with those cycles, you, you can uh, guarantee getting past them without... Uh, them seeing you. There's also just a 100% consistent way to pass every trainer and every spinner in the game. Um, and that's because every time you deload the overworld, their timer resets. So you can just walk up to one tile before a spinner, pause the game, open your bag, and then close it again, and that resets their spinner timer, and you can just walk right past them. But that's also the slowest way to pass spinners. So if there's a way to do it faster than that, you generally try to do that. What's the yeah, level 42 we range? Uh, Weezing is 11 and 16. As opposed to a 6 and 16 range um, when you're level 40. And when you don't kill it, it kills you a lot of the time. <laughs> yep, it's, its move of choice for killing you is Sludge, and you're usually in a range to die there, and even when you're not in a range, um, it Sludge is a 30% chance to poison you, which happens about 80% of the time. So you will just a lot of times still die even if you don't get you don't die to the original range because you'll get poisoned, take some poison damage, and die from there. Uh, for those who don't know, the reason we had to go to the rocket underground was to get the self scope in order to uh, reveal this Marowak. I assume most people watching know the plot of Gen One. Pokemon games, but I, I I'm, sure, I'm so, sure a lot of people don't, so. Yeah, I, I think every once in a while, it's, it's, it's good to just yeah. give a brief refresher. These games are pretty old. <laughs> yeah. Some Central people are too young for them. Uh, this, this game came out when I was either four or five years old. I mean, to just, be, just to make all you in the chat feel old. To be fair, these, uh, like, this is most simple story of any Pokemon game, really. Aside from Red, which is the same exact story. Yep. But it essentially, you're just, your 10-year-old Professor Oak's like, go off in the world, catch these magical creatures. And then catch you Pokemon, just... Pokemon, fight gym leaders, take down an uh, international criminal syndicate. Yeah, you just happen to run into a bunch of mobsters, and you're like, that's bad, and then you beat them. And then you do that, like, two or three more times. And then you just keep, go back to fighting gym leaders. Like, so, that, that's more or less it. Question for, for all three of you, then. Uh, what were all of your first Pokemon games? Uh, Pearl. This one, actually, which is why I wanted to be the first Pokemon game I speed ran. Black and white one. Oh white my god. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, no, I, I love such how you a could, baby. <laughs> I love how you could tell... I, I love how I could hear in your voice how much you didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a baby. I got into Pokemon really late, despite knowing it as early as Gen 3. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I was aware in elementary school of Pokemon being Dave Barrel and everything, which is kind of cool. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah my uh, my first one was Red, because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, we knew that one, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I literally bought it as, like, a bundle with a Game Boy Color. Uh, I still have that Game Boy Color. I do not have the Red anymore. I have no idea what happened to it. A lot of a lot of fellow red, blue, yellow starters in chat. Let's go. Everyone's just old, yeah. apparently. I'm just a baby. <laughs> Pearl was my first, and then I got Emerald and Leaf Green soon after that. I went backwards instead of forwards. Uh, 
yeah. Anyway, uh, these fights are not super interesting. Uh, these two rats can no quick attack. They can use quick attack at one and four. But aside from that, these fights are pretty trivial. You'll notice how low we are on move. That's the other reason we sent Elixir earlier in a uh, rock tunnel. Um, is we don't quite have enough moves to make it through this section without that Elixir. It's really close. You're like one or two moves short in like perfect situations to make it through without that Elixir. Oh, you know, you know. Speaking about Red Blue, uh, you you run those games quite a bit, right, yep. Wave? Mm -hmm. When it, can you can you kind of talk about the differences like speedrun wise between uh, like Red slash Yellow in this game? Uh, I can, but not at this exact moment. Oh right, uh, we're about to do this. But yeah, uh, uh, there's a pretty difficult spinner pass coming up that I'm yeah, going yeah, to try yeah. to do optimally. Good. To show oh, it right, off. Cycling road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then yeah, after that. I can... Okay, sounds good. Yeah, this is one of the this is uh, one of the harder spinner passes because, like he was talking about earlier, doing everything in the realm of like kind of thirty-two frame cycles, uh, you it doesn't line up super perfectly on this, so you have to kind of you have to wait like just a few like a handful of frames to do it perfectly, and it's not really precise. You don't have a way to like just buffer kill a cup like just enough frames so i'm gonna be silent here All right. nice so again there, there is an easy 100 percent consistent way to pass every spinner since you bike after them and then pause the game but uh that's a lot slower than what i just did uh so we, we do the harder thing and f so the thing there those guys didn't move at all the the thing is that they had an opportunity to move. Yeah. And so so the not, pause was specifically yeah. timed to be immediately after one of those opportunities happened. So that if they don't spin, I know I'm safe. And if they do spin, uh, then I can react to that and do and move differently. Um, anyway, uh, time for Safari Zone. So uh, we're going to catch a bunch of Pokemon here. Hope you're all ready. <laughs> Now, Did in Fire Ground 2, here? you do catch a bunch of Pokemon here, and it's really interesting and also really frustrating. But, uh, not in this game. Oh, if you're watching it, it's very fun. If you're watching it and not being the one playing it, it is very fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, 100% agree with you there. When you're not the one getting screwed over by RNG, it's very fun. Uh, pick up a full restore for later. And then you're just going to pick up the uh, the gold teeth, which is what you need to get in here. And then I'm also going to pick up a second revive, just for a bit of extra sleep. Also surf. Yeah, and you also get surf. Yeah, you actually, there's actually quite a few useful items here. Two of them are super mandatory. You have to get them. And then there's a couple other ones that are good. Uh, doing like a casual playthrough, there's a lot of items worth a lot of money. Uh, Fire Red Round 2, you pick up like a Leaf Stone as well as a protein for money. Now we get, now we're slow, we're quickly approaching that Koga fight that we were talking about. Yep. Fun um, fact, that's my favorite strategy in the game, flying to the city that you're already in, just to, so you don't have to exit the safari zone. I, don't, I can't explain why I love it so much, but I do. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna teach Surf. Uh, oh, that's a Pidgey. Fun fact, Pidgey, not not able to learn Surf. And this is our main move for the rest of the run. It's also actually interesting because he was saying how close we are to running out of those moves. Because he teaches Surf, uh, the sur PP for Surf goes to 15. Uh, I believe in later gens, if you teach over a move, it leaves with the same leaves you with the same amount of PP remaining as the move that was taught over had, but that is not the case here. So we go from however many water guns you had, I'm guessing like five or less, to 15 surfs. Yeah, I think I had six. I'm basically out of all my other moves. We're, we're gonna get our, all of our moves back in a minute. Uh, well, a little more than a minute, but you know what I mean. Uh, right now I use an orange berry, which I picked up like 45 minutes ago. Uh, I need to be in Torrent, but also high enough that I don't die to Koga's moves. And I'm actually, cutting it, I'm actually cutting it pretty close here. I should be fine. 
Even with plus 10 from these three levels. Yeah, I still have it, so I'll be fine. Um, but yeah, you need to be... You need a very specific range of Torrent. And even then, it's still a very risky fight. Even with perfect HP, you still die here a lot of the time. <laughs> Are you mild or rash? I'm rash. Okay. Which is a minus special defense for those who don't know. Okay, well... Yeah, and this this looks like a uh, fairly solid HP, as well as it looks like you. I can tell you have one of the higher HP IVs as well. Yeah, if you're curious, I'm 28, 28, 24, 31, 28, 31. If that means something to you, nice. But those are my IVs in the sense though. All right, I missed the special defense, but that one doesn't matter at all. all right. so. I have two revives and both living party members, so I probably don't need to save, but this fight is just so terrible that I'm going to do it just in case. Believe it or not, he could... He I have seen could people use die here, like, yeah. lose both their revives and still die. It's entirely possible. It's unlikely, but that's the name of this game. Yeah, unlikely always, things can just happen. That chance. So in Torrent, both... Well, actually, the coughing's always die no matter what. In Torrent, the muck is a two-shot, and the wheezing is a range to one-shot. Which is why we need Torrent. Ideally, we crit this. Nope. Okay, Acid Armor is the best move. It usually uses Minimize, which is fine as long as you hit. And then it rarely uses Sludge, which is extremely bad. And normally on turn two, it will use Sludge, because again, it's at lower health, so it's AI changes. Yeah, so for you guys who don't know, Minimize, uh, it's another move that boosts the it boosts evasiveness of the Pokemon that uses it. So essentially, the it it would be 75% to hit Surf. All right, 11 which, and 16? Hey, we got nice. it. All right, Good so Pokemon? when the fight goes like that, you know, why are you saving? Why are you so scared? <laughs> I, I swear, literally every time I watch anybody's speed run this game, whether it be round two or any percent, they always die to the, the wheezing, like every yeah. single time. Yeah. The reason it's so bad is because it it lives a lot of the time and then it almost always uses sludge. You you heal to an HP to where sludge doesn't kill you, but sludge is 30% to poison. And that and always, always kills poisons. you. Yeah. One it's, of the weird things about that wheezing is it has tackle too, so sometimes if you're just at a super low health, it'll use tackle and then miss tackle. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, you'll get out of a situation where you're otherwise dead. That's pretty rare. Oh uh, yeah. It, it's very rare, but that's the kind of that's the I've kind of thing that happened happens before, with this where I game. had basically no health and I was out of potions, so I super potioned on turn one and then got tackled. <laughs> uh, let's go here. Uh, so this is kind of the boss rush section of the run. We kind of got rid we got out of the way all of the uh, all of the non gym trainer stuff. I've got super repel. It's fine. Uh, so now uh, we kind of just go through all of the gym leaders in a row with only one detour for Sylph because that's what we need to do to fight Sabrina first. Uh, the Sylph rival fight is just uh, really annoying. Uh, we can't, we need to be pretty high level for that, uh, which is why we delay Sylph as long as possible. Yeah, it's co uh, the gym that's going to be after Pokemon Mansion is Lane. It's actually generally the seventh gym. He's the highest... Uh, Highest yeah, level we're going. To, we're going a bit out of order here. In case yeah, you haven't picked it up. But you could uh, after you get to after you get to uh, surge, it really uh, the map really opens up a lot. Or af after rock tunnel, I should say. Yeah, the map What's really, really opens up frustrating a lot. is if we could, we would fight Blaine first. Um, Blaine is by far the easiest. Uh, well, also Giovanni because Giovanni's team is a joke. Yeah, but. Uh, of, like, Koga... Do I need this elixir? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, of, like, Koga, Blaine, Erica, Sabrina, Blaine is by far the easiest for Squirtle. But, uh, the problem is in order to get to Blaine, you need to be able to use Surf outside of battle, and that's locked behind Koga. So we're kind of forced into um, doing Koga as early as possible to gain access to Blaine. <laughs> Yeah, the two easiest gym leaders have have locks to make it so that you have to do much harder things first. 
G Giovanni is only available after you've done like all the rest of this all the rest of the story up to that point, which means this all the seven gems that aren't him. Okay, so uh, these are gym questions. Um, really embarrassing when you get them wrong, which I have done before. <laughs> have you done this recently? Yes. <laughs> oh, get it wrong? No, I, I oh, haven't missed okay. it recently. <laughs> I, I've done the questions recently. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> okay. I better not get Tombstoney wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favorite TM. Which and then what's really changed. funny is immediately after this gym, <laughs> there's another yes no where if you get it wrong, you lose 10 minutes. Yeah. Mmm. That's my favorite one that I always hear about. Wait, do you use uh, X items on Blaine? Uh, sometimes use an X speed, but I'm not going to need to. Uh, Swift, do you want to explain X items? Because I don't. I think it's been a while since we talked about it. Right. So, X items before Gen 7 would raise your stat by one stage if you if you ask me what is the multiplier of one stage i will tell you i don't know i have no idea but stats can be raised up to six stages that's what i do know so or lowered <laughs> yeah, yeah or lowered the six sure. stages i i can i can explain um, the i can but, explain the stat thing if you want want the, but it's, like um, really it's, it's weird. fine it's fine um but that's really what you need to know. So it's very beneficial for runs. Like I know it makes Blizzard go from a seventy percent accurate move to like what ninety three with one, or is it yeah, two? Seventy to ninety three. Okay, yeah. So it's just super useful to have. Um, and then in Gen Seven, they raised it to where it does two stages instead of one. And uh, yeah, it's it's basically the fastest way you can. Uh, usually raise your stats without having to use a move to do it. Um, there's some runs that do do that, such as Black and White 2 uses Swords Dance. It's because yeah, it's faster. All chat needs to know is, you, you, you use X items, you go faster, or you do more damage, or you're more accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. And those are really, really helpful in a speedrun where you're trying to do things fast. So a common strategy you'll see is sending up a lot of X items and then just kind of sweeping the team. Yep. Uh, that is the, the Pokemon one speedrun special. Yeah. On this fight, you sometimes need to use an X speed for the rapid dash. Um, I actually I have perfect speed on this squirtle, so I actually just naturally outspeed the rapid dash. Um, it's there's also in a uh, Pokemon Mansion I could have picked up a Carbos on the ground to give me a bit of extra speed. Um, there are some speed IVs where that's beneficial. I am technically at one, except if I pick up and use that Carvos, my speed actually becomes too good, and it causes problems later. <laughs> so uh, I, I skip it. All right, so uh, Bill right here wants to take you to the Sevi Islands for a whole side quest thing. If you say yes right there, you can't get back until you finish that side quest. So you lose like 10 minutes. Uh, so clearly you're going to go do that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gotta make the S a little bit closer. Uh, it's it's just a whole thing. <laughs> in round two, you have to do that side quest in order to unlock the post game. Uh, so you do say yes there, and you go to Sevi Island and do uh, do some fun stuff. But at eighty percent, we'd uh, we'd like to uh, not do that. So unfortunately, uh, my HP is actually a tiny bit too high here. I level out of Torrent. Because, you know, whenever you level up, you know, you gain some amount of HP, but that gets added to your current HP as well. So, like, right now, I'm just barely in Torrent. I'm just barely under one-third. And now I am no longer in Torrent. Um, so because of that, I'm going to have to uh, get a couple blizzards here. Whereas otherwise, I could have just used Surf. But, uh, yeah, I'm, not it's a big deal. This fight's not dangerous. I, with two, like, you can die to this fight. It's not possible for me to die three times to this fight. Not realistically. So I don't need to save for it. Um, but I might need to use a revive depending on how this goes. Although, uh, most of the time, I'm probably fine, unless I get crit. Yeah, the only thing that it. Uh, I mean, you still have the Lumberry on him, right? 
Yes, I do have one berry, actually. Yeah, so, so it, it even, yeah, you're even less likely to die here, because the main thing that happens, if you're not in range to die from uh, either the Vile Plume or the uh, Victory Bow... It'll after, use if you, for generally. Yeah, it'll use Sun's for which you'll usually have to heal off, then it'll use Giga Drain. Yep. But with the Lumberry on, it'll be he healed automatically, so it'll be able to save an extra turn. I forgot to talk about the Lumberry earlier. The reason I picked that up is specifically for Koga. Uh, if I missed the Weezing range and got Sludge Poison, I would die normally, but the Lumberry would heal off the poison before um, the, the poison tick would happen, so I would live. So that's why I got the Lumberry. It's also somewhat useful for this fight. It's somewhat useful for uh, Sabrina. Yeah, this is, this would be the run that hits both Blizzards. <laughs> those, are the the only full, those are the only full odds Blizzards we have to hit. Every other Blizzard we use in this run will have an X accuracy up for. All the gym fights have gone well. Yeah, all my gym fights have been great, actually. <laughs> it's just been like boat rival. Rival fights. Yeah. Yeah, I have my bridge, but both my rival fights were terrible. We got another one coming up right now. Yay! Uh... Oh, I could have. Okay. Normally, you don't have uh, uh, Saffron City unlocked yet. I only have it unlocked because I'm doing the late surge route. So I should have flown this to uh, the Saffron instead. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's. There's a lot of tiny, uh, tiny optimizations, not just like from the different routes, but um, the, uh, there's some things that are like uh, canceling turn frames. A turn frame is essentially uh, if you're not moving and you start moving in a direction that you're not currently facing, it'll it'll do, uh, take what eight frames, and you, there's you ways just, to yeah. minimize that that loss. Uh, there's some audio lag skips here and there that are used that save a variable amount of frames. It's a lot of small things, but really does add up over the course of two hours. You saw me right before I paused and then ran past a, a scientist. That was a walker. The pause was again, manipulating this, like lining up on those spin timers so that uh, I knew it would be a safe pass. And right here, there's no, there's not really a way to manipulate like line up on that guy's spin timer, so you just kind of do the bag manips there. Those are called bag manips, where you go into the bag and then back out. Um, we have the menu there anyway. That was not too bad. Uh, oh, I probably should have saved. Oh well. I'm gonna use two X accuracies. My health is high anyway. Oh yeah, that yeah that'll be fine then. You bought extras. Yeah, I have seven. I think you need nine in order to double X act everything you want to. So I, I need to get down into pretty deep torrent here. Uh, so I keep torrent for the next section. Like that is one HP out of torrent, but now I'm well into torrent. Yeah, and that's and yeah. just ent entirely entirely good. There's no way you can miss the blizzard on this Venusaur. Yep. With two X uh, accuracies, it's just a guaranteed hit. And if you miss this, it kills you with Razor Leaf. Like, uh, every single Venusaur, basically, uh, we can't miss Blizzard, otherwise we die. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not Squirtle fun. struggles with grass types. That's why I like uh, Sapphire and Emerald so much, is uh, aside from your rival, there's like one grass type in the entire game. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sapphire has cool trainer Brook with Roselia, and then Emerald has one trainer with Two Roselias and a, uh, uh, it's a Shroomish, yeah. Also, I think, the, I, I think the ways the, that, uh, you handle the, like, you handle the rival fights with those are, are pretty cool in Sapphire and Emeralds. They're really cool strats. Yeah, Champ sometimes uses growth, and that keeps you alive, but, uh, most of the time, if you miss a Blizzard on BS, or you just can't die. Uh, Alright, that fight went well. I got a good rival fight, go figure. 
It's okay. We, there's more to come. Yeah. Uh, this, for a while, there's not really going to be much going on. Um, most of these fights are pretty trivial. Yeah, after, Sabrina, I mean, because I have the Lumber, it's actually impossible for me to die for the Sabrina at this HP. It will be possible if I get fake out from the Kangaskhan coming up. Really, after Koga, they, uh, for a while, things are... Like, you can still die to a couple things here and there. Obviously, the, yeah. like, Erica, if you miss the blizzards. Um, the, like, this rival fight that we just had. Sabrina can go wrong. You cannot die to Giov the Giovanni gym really at all, um, but it things get a lot easier until about basically the Elite Four. Yeah, Good. Koga is kind of the uh, the gatekeeper for this run. If you make it past Koga, you're very safe aside from uh, like if you miss a Blizzard on Venusaur. Like that. That's. Really, the only thing I can realistically kill you past Koga up until the Elite Four. And then the Elite Four fights are all really annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll talk about that later. A couple of those definitely will get, like, can get up there with how how bad, like, Koga or Surge is. They don't quite meet that threshold, they but can they can feel very no. Oh my god. Uh, how much does Sidebeam do? 11 to 14. Yeah, crit. And crit is like a range to kill me. That's the only way I die is I beam crit. 1 in 16. That's fine. I have the revive. I can recover that. Uh. Oh, the notes. Yeah, you can recover it, but I was going to say, man, even maybe the, the notes don't say how much, uh. What? Future Sight do, does. I'll future be, Sight, future sight kills me from here. I'll be fine. Um, I don't think Future Sight can crit, actually. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like, Future oh, yeah. Sight can't crit, so if it... Yeah, 23 seemed a bit low, but... Yeah, 20, 23 is too low. Yeah. Right. Future Sight's a um, really bug, bugged out move in Gen 3. Yeah, it's Gen really 3. weird how the damage calculation works on that. Um, yeah, picking up the Master Ball is optional, <laughs> as you just saw. Uh, uh, if I picked up and used the Carbos earlier, this would be a free fight. The only reason it's scary is because I have to set up an X speed on Venomoth, but with the Carbos, I'd be fast enough without the X speed. Again, the problem is later on Bruno, if I used the Carbos, my my speed would be too high and would cause issues on Bruno. <sighs> uh, yeah, it's really so weird how it, you can just have... like. Most of the time, we were thinking, oh, our stat's too high. We're talking about HP just because we're trying to keep Torrent. Because of torrent, yeah. But there is there is a point where your speed is too high, and that causes a problem on Bruno because the AI loves to make uh, it. it loves to make your speed lower than its speed, and mm -hmm. if it has a move that will do that, it will more or less prioritize that. Yep. So you you enter the fight faster, and so it'll almost always use Rock Tomb because you're faster. <laughs> and we need to be slower after the first Rock Tomb in order for his AI to be nice, basically. Um, but if I used the Carbos, I would be speed tied after a Rock Tomb. And then the AI is like completely unpredictable, which is really not good. Unpredictable is, ve unpredictable is very bad for this game. Yeah, un for unpredictable, this game. not good. <laughs> for Pokemon speedruns in general, because you like, that's how you kind of get around so much of the RNG is you know you figure out what's predictable and you try to just work your way around that and plan things out accordingly to what you can predict but with if more stuff becomes unable to be predicted then stuff can go off the rails insanely quick yep all right uh this split is extremely boring because everything dies in one hit and by split nice. I mean Jim like this if you're not in Torrent, then um, these Machokes are ranges. But I am in Torrent, so they're not ranges. Well, this might be a good time then to uh, talk about similarities to uh, Red Slash Yellow. Oh, yeah. I said I was going to do that. So, uh, for those who have watched speedruns of Red or Yellow, 
uh, you might know that Squirtle is not the main, well for Red at least, Squirtle is not the main for Red. Uh, the main in Red is actually Nidoking. And there are a number of reasons for that. Um, Nidoking gets Horn Attack at level 8, so it does really well against Route 3. Uh, it gets Thrash very early, um, and Thrash lasts for 3 to 4 turns. Uh, you can get level 16, or you, you can get a Nidoking um, as early as Mount Moon. So fully evolved Pokemon before you're even leaving Mount Moon. You can catch it um, to the left of Viridian City. And then most importantly, the way that uh, one hit, the way that X accuracies work in Gen 1 is once you use an X accuracy, you literally cannot miss anymore. So uh, Neo King abuses that with Horn Drill. Uh, something you might have noticed is everything that I said was good about Nido King, completely gone in this game. Nido King is terrible in this game. <laughs> uh, so that that's why uh, Nido King is not the main for this. It's you get it much later. It's a much lower level. It doesn't have as good a move pool. Horn drill and X accuracies don't work the same way. So it's that's why we use Blastoise instead. Um, in Gen 1, we do actually skip the uh, the Rocket Underground section because we can use a Poké Doll to get past uh, the, the Marowak in the tower. It's a pretty cool thing. That was removed in this game. And the AI is also a lot more predictable in Gen 1 because it's a lot stupider. <laughs> yeah, one of, the, one of the main things that you'll see a lot, especially towards the end of the game, is it likes to, in Gen 1, the AI likes to use super effective moves, which makes sense. Um, but sometimes it'll use moves that are super effective if it was actually an attacking move, like agility, which is a psychic type move. It does not use damage, but if a psychic type move had hit Neo King, it would be super effective. Yep. But then the the AI just doesn't realize that agility is not going to do anything. It literally just only looks at the type chart. It doesn't take into account um, if it does any damage. I should talk, I mentioned this all the way back at the beginning of the run about an AI will use a move if it thinks it kills or if it thinks it does more damage. Never actually explained what that meant. So what the AI will do is, at least for the trainers with smart AI, it'll see if any of its moves will kill. And what it does is it simulates a damage roll. It doesn't actually use the move yet. It just uh, sees what would happen if it did use that move. It's, we call it a pseudo roll. And if that pseudo roll would kill us, then it will always use that move if the trainer is smart. Um, but that's not the actual damage it does. Uh, it, it, when it uses the move, it actually does another damage roll to see how much damage it does. So sometimes the AI will think that a move will kill and then use it, but you live on one or two HP because it had a high pseudo roll, but a low actual roll. Pretty cool mechanic. Yeah, it actually, it makes it weird because that uh, some things that are like ranges, um, yeah, it makes like it something inconsistent. Is, yeah, something's a range to kill you. Like, if something's a 50% range to kill you, um, but if, like, it may, may only use that move if it rolls a range to kill you, but then it's to 50% to roll it initially versus not rolling it initially, and if it doesn't roll it, then it won't use that move. But then if it rolls it, then it has to do that again. So a 50% range to die becomes a 25% range to die. That's super oversimplification, so that's not exactly how that works, but it's a, it kind of gets behind the idea a little bit. And also, I wanted to say in chat, somebody was asking what the pace is on this. Um, I can get, so a 144.52 it looked like for the Giovanni split, and that's about, that's, uh, about four and a half minutes behind Waves PB and almost exactly like what five minute five minutes five seconds ahead of the world record uh the world record has like is actually even further ahead up up here and then struggles with the has some st bad stuff happen on elite four if i remember correctly i haven't actually watched it in a while i don't remember I how it went. Elite four. i can't remember all the details but, uh... there was some yeah there was one part like part that like was specifically bad for Shiro, and I can't remember which part it was. I thought it might have been Elite Four. But uh, this is, I mean, e easily like sub 210 pace. I would say 206, 207 seems reasonable. I messed up my timer, so I have no idea what pace this is. Oh, okay. 
I, I had splits open, but I uh, I paused it for the break and then forgot to unpause it. So. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, not dead. You can actually live Razor Leaf there, uh, but it's unlikely, especially if you're Rash. Although I, I would have had it on this run. Uh, Razor Leaf, if you don't know, also it's a high crit rate move, so it's actually one in eight to crit instead of the standard one in sixteen. I don't think it's until Gen seven that crit becomes one in twenty-four. Gen seven sounds about right. But also, right after this gen nice. is when crits... Or no, is it gen 6 that crits become one and a half time in damage instead of double damage? Uh... It's either gen 4 or gen 6 that that changes. In gen happens. 6 it becomes one and a half times. Uh, I just okay. need here. Uh, we delay the speed because we don't always have to use it. Yeah, you can skip it if you get a very specific... Like, if you get Rain Dance from Gyarados and you can tank a hit from Alakazam. Um, but I didn't get that fight. I got a better fight, actually, by flinching uh, Gyarados. Because Rain Dance is actually pretty slow. Uh, but anyway. So basically right now, with rival fight, this rival fight out of the way, it... Uh, the next fight's going to be the start of the Elite Four. We just got to get there, go through some victory roads. So not much happening for a little bit. Uh, if people have any other questions, feel free to put them in chat. We'll answer, we'll answer whatever we can, the best we can. Yeah, and uh, if you don't have any questions, go ahead and take a second to go follow Wave Warrior on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Wave Warrior. You can also just hover over his name on the title if you're watching on Twitch right now. Uh, definitely go drop him a follow. Lots of Pokemon speedrun stuff. Again, this guy is amazing. I he am currently running in, like, this all category. the Gen 3 games. Uh, if you so enjoy this category, game. you'll see more of it. It's <laughs> uh, a slightly different route where we do early surge and then die to him a lot. But, you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah, you can you can follow Wave in his journey to get the full Gen 3 uh, sweep. <laughs> um... There are no required trainers in Victory Road in this gen, so it's uh, just a bit of biking and then the Elite Four. Dude, imagine a Kanto game that actually required trainers in the in, in Victory Road. <laughs> That'd be so lame. Uh, Let's Go uh, requires like six trainers. It's not six, but it, it's like five trainers? Four? It's four, a lot. Five. It's a Except lot. it requires is in quotations. Yeah, you can technically skip uh, them, but... We teach strength here. We don't actually ever use strength. Uh, we just we don't need the fourth move slot, and we don't have anything else that can learn strength. It, uh, one of the things, uh, the options for getting a cut user was Rattata or Sandshrew. Sandshrew actually saves a little bit of time because it can learn strength. So you can teach it, you teach it a little bit earlier. And you don't have to, it's a little bit quicker because you don't have to teach it over a different move. Yeah. Uh, which saves a little bit of time. And actually, there is one very, very niche okay, scenario man. where you can use Surf, uh, but it just generally does not come up. Uh, so you saw me earlier equip the black glasses. We pick up the black glasses basically only for Lorelei. Um, Lorelei's team. Uh, counter surf pretty hard uh, so we don't really have a good move to use other than bite and her team her lapras is real bulky uh, so we need the extra 10% damage for those who don't know uh, black glasses boost dark type moves by 10% and bite is a dark type move also for those who don't know bite is actually special in this game uh, whether a move is physical or special in gens 1 uh, 1 through 3 it just depends on what type of move it is the easy way to remember is if it's an Eeveelusion or Dragon type, then it's special. Otherwise, it's physical. Yeah, and bite being special matters a it's, lot. It's because, so good. <laughs> because if it was if it was a physical like it is in every Gen Pass Gen Three, it would it would be so it's, it would be such a like such a big struggle because we rely on that to kill a lot of. A lot of things, and we wouldn't. Be, we most likely would not be able to run modest because that's a minus attack. And if we, we would still need bite for sure. 
um, but then we'd have to probably have constraints on attack and that would just make it so the number of squirtles you can look for is way lower which would mean this is like fewer people would even get this far and like as far as their pbs have gone oh yeah it just an insanely different game you'd have to be worried about so much different stuff so having the revives actually doesn't help at all for elite four because i need to set up x items on it every single Elite Four member. Uh, so it's it's faster to deposit here. Uh, we put the Blastoise in and then took it back out. That fully heals it. That's faster than taking the center. Um, and then I just I have to save for just every single Elite Four fight. The Elite Four is so bad in this game. If every single Elite Four trainer can kill you, realistically. And all in different ways. Yeah, they're 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 all uniquely terrible. Yeah, it's really, it really is such a fitting end to this speed run. <laughs> Consider it's all uniquely terrible. Is such a fitting end to the speed run here. The so first uh, Lorelei, we have to set up four X specials uh, for this fight for Bite to do enough damage, and even with four X specials, which is three times the damage, um, we are still three shotting Lapras because Lapras is just so bulky. Uh, the best possible fight here. This Dugong is pretty likely every turn to use Hail, which loses a lot of time. If it doesn't use Hail, that saves a lot of time. Of course, we got Hail there, which is what you, you expect. You just had to, to say it, and then instant Hail. I, I don't think I've ever gotten Hailless. I might have gotten it once. It's <laughs> there's no it's, way, really. Yeah, it's I've I, gotten it like three times. Dude, I ran the game for like my a month. recent Lorelei's. <laughs> I got frozen on this fight four times in two runs. Jeez. Oh yeah, that was you definitely had bad Lorelei luck, really. Uh, that was my fourth back. Yeah. Okay, not frozen. The only way to get frozen is Ice Beam, by the way, which is 10% to freeze you. And it's not guaranteed to use Ice Beam. It could be, yeah, it's, it's just as likely to use, use Surf. surf. Yeah. Um, so this is this has been a very standard fight so far. Actually, is it um, maybe more likely to use Ice Beam and Hail? Or I, does Hail not increase Ice Beam? Um, it probably uses Surf more often out of Hail because Surf would probably do more damage than yeah. Ice Beam. Uh, I don't. I, I, I don't know how the damage that. rolls work out. It's not super relevant to know them. You just yeah, kinda it, get, you just kind of get what you get on that dugong, and then work with it. Yeah, if you're under like 50 health, like maybe for under 40 health, you, you're like, okay, I need to he kind of heal now. But yeah. you generally don't die to the dugong without like an ill time. Uh, I should just barely tank a crit. It's a range, but I live most of them, so I'm gonna risk that. It's better to not heal on Lapras if you can avoid it. Because Lapras moves that also sucks. Uh, but I but it's better so to not do it. Flinch or crit. Flinch or crit, both are excellent here. Got neither. Uh oh wait. I tanked that. Oh nice. That's very rare, actually. Don't kill me. Ooh. Are you kidding you me? Think no! You that, <laughs> that was a max roll! Okay, I shouldn't have done that. I should have played it safe, but I, I was greedy. I I actually got that was the only roll that killed me. Yo, time to get hailless now. Yeah. That's bit that is yeah. as that's exactly as likely as getting a as getting a crit. I could have just crit him. Could have flinched. Yeah. So that that's the same likelihood as if Lapras had just crit him anyways. Alright, I got greedy. Punished for it. You should keep resetting until you get hailless. Please don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Three okay. ice beams. Yeah, I was into okay. a surf. No okay. safeguard Come either. Alright, just gotta flinch. Get the flinch yeah. or crit. Flinch or crit. Flinch or crit. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh baby. Congrats on your hairless. Too, too bad I died. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you went with my recommendation to reset until you got hairless. This cloister also does protect. It, it can use it sometimes. It's annoying. It's especially I, uh, annoying in hail. Well, that's not entirely true. Because the hail always runs out. But, uh, 
Yeah, but it is, uh, Hail is one of the moves that Cloyster has as well. So if Hail is up, it's not going to use Hail at all. So it's more likely to use Protect. So even though there technically shouldn't be any like interaction between Hail and Protect normally, uh, because Hail's up, the Cloyster in this situation will use Protect more often. I, my PB gets Hailless but I get double protect on a cloister. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Uh, fun fact also about Lapras. Um, Torrent Surf actually does more damage to it than Bite. I think you might be able to two-shot with it, but Lapras has the water absorbability. So. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, like, it does no damage to that Lapras. Yeah, yeah this Lapras is real. It knows, it uses Confuse Ray and Body Slam as its two moves. I'm glad I healed. <laughs> I'm glad you healed too. I was questioning for a second. And it was worth it when I was already paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. You need the black glasses to reshot this thing mainly through that citrus berry. And it, as if this fight wasn't bad enough, uh, you can sometimes, very rarely, do enough damage with the first two bites to hit it into heal range, which is terrible. I'm pretty sure I can actually do the uh, the guard spec strat here because I have really good defense. You're like I need to end this 100, fight right? with plus two uh, special attack and in torrent and neutral speed as well. Yeah, neutral speed. Yeah, the strat that he's going for right now. Uh, there's eight. two main strats. One is the X. Uh, when is the X speed strat? You just accept that Onyx I don't is think going it works. to. That's fine. Okay. Uh, th th this is the strat you normally do. Yeah. Where you you just let Rock Tomb hit you and lower your speed, and then it manipulates the AI to use um, Earthquake. Yeah, because Earthquake's going to do more damage. It still can Rock Tomb you sometimes, uh, but it's pretty. It's more consistent than the alternative strat. This is not going to quite be enough damage, but uh, it's fine. Uh, we stall one more turn with guard spec, and he should rock to him here because I'm faster again. Nice. And it's easy like that. So you need torrent. You need plus two special attack and torrent uh, in order to kill the Machamp on this fight, and then you also need torrent for the next fight. So uh, that Onyx is all about uh, making sure you get down into Torrent for not just this fight, but also the next fight, but you also can't be too low because Hitmonchan has Mach Punch. And so it'll kill you if uh, if it sees a kill with Mach Punch. Yeah, the, alter the alternate strat, which is uh, less often used because you need to be at a good health for it, is the guard spec strat. You g generally want to yeah. be like 80 to 100, and yeah. you use yeah. guard spec to uh, so that Rock Tomb won't lower your speed, and you're supposed to basically trick the AI into keep trying to lower your speed, even though it can't. Yeah, it'll, it'll it, just keep using Rock Tomb, except for when it uses Earthquake, which it sometimes yeah. does anyway. So it, it's a pretty inconsistent strat, but it is faster when it works. Yeah. The AI likes to lower your speed. Actually, it's uh, true. It might not be even be faster. But it's still, but sometimes it just doesn't. Yeah, th this fight is really annoying to try to set up good HP on because it's usually such a narrow range, but uh, it helps to have high HP and high defense in general. Um, and then uh, Agatha. So remember how I said that every single one of these fights is uniquely terrible? Yeah, this is the double team fight. <laughs> uh, Agatha's Gengar can use two moves. It can either use Shadow Punch or Double Team, and you actually prefer Double Team generally because uh, Shadow Punch forces you to heal but you need to keep in Torrent. Uh, so the way this fight generally works is you have to hit a Surf through two double teams. And then if you miss it, you have to hit it through three double teams. And if you miss it, you have to hit it through four double teams. And you can see where this is going. Yeah, at six at six double teams, it's what, about 33% for a full? exactly 33%. Yeah. 33%, uh, what, it goes... Okay, it's down, correct to just go in here, and we miss and we die. Yeah. <laughs> It was guaranteed to use Shadow Punch there because it saw a kill. So uh, this is how the Elite Four goes. <laughs> yeah, but Im imagine go like there if you're on like kind of barely PB or barely world record pace there. Um, if you heal there, that loses. You'll have to heal twice, so that loses two turns, which is a very significant amount of time. If you're just barely uh, m getting to the point that you want to get to. 
but so then you want to do it there. You're seventy five percent to hit that. And one and then shadow punch. You still don't. So now is when you heal because I still have to set up another X item. It's guaranteed to shadow punch on this turn. It sees a kill. Yeah, and shadow punch here is now good because he hasn't double teamed. Now yet. I want shadow punch to avoid double team. Don't crit nice. me. All right, and so now I can't miss. But uh. Yeah, this fight's really annoying. It's, I got a lot of Shadow Punches. The most common fight is just two double teams. And then three double teams, then four double teams, then five double teams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you get Shadow Punch on that turn two there, it's just correct to get in. Because once, once you get past Gengar, the fight's free. I, I, I've set up all I need to, so I just I win. Yeah, just you gotta you, get you, past the Gengar. You win the fight or you die, or you die on, Gen on that Gengar. But it's just annoying enough to be a whole fight worth of problematic. Yep. And Lance coming up is the Blizzard fight. I have to hit um, either four or five Blizzards. I'm guessing you're probably going for the five stri the five Blizzards. I'm probably gonna do two specs. I have enough or two uh, X. But yeah. Oh yeah, that's. There's, there's just no reason to uh, worry about it right now. Yeah. The so one of the when we were talking earlier about the stat constraints for Squirtle, one of the things was we can take either 30 or 31 special attack IV, and it really does not matter except for in like two fights, and this is one yeah. of them. Yeah. So I, I could do a slightly a slightly faster on average uh, strat. But uh, I'm, I'm just gonna do the, the guaranteed safe one because it's a, hardly any difference between the two. It's one strat you use two bites instead of one, so you're more likely to flinch. Uh, bite is thirty percent to flinch for those who don't know. It is thirty percent, right? Yeah, I think thirty. Yes. Yeah, I feel like they changed it at some point. I, I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I bet Bulbapedia knows for sure. Well, he does not always right. <laughs> yeah. I bet Cerebi knows for sure. Uh, so... Yeah, I think 30%. Spec, I am taking 80 damage from Hyper Beam, so I'm still safe for now. I am now no longer safe. So yeah, essentially this fight is you're setting up on the Gyarados, and it will use, uh, it'll use a combination of bite and dra uh, dragon rage. You'd think it would always use dragon rage because dragon rage is guaranteed 40, 40 damage, and because of that, it's going to do more. It does a lot more than bite. But uh, the AI is really weird with dragon rage. It'll even if you're at below forty health, there's sometimes where it won't like see that, and it'll just n use a different move anyways. That comes up more on like the self rival fight, but. You do want to see more bites because that means you have less, uh, le you have more turns until you get into the range where Hyper Beam will kill you. And once it uses Hyper Beam, once it, you're in range to die to Hyper Beam, you heal, and then you have, you generally might ha have to heal again because there's an Aerodactyl at the end where it can. Yeah. It also cause does Hyper problems. Beam. I'm, I'm out of range, uh, but I will <laughs> die to a crit if it uses crit, wing attack, or ancient power. It'll use either wing attack or ancient power of either crits they kill me. He hit all the blizzards, yay! I used 2x, so 100% accuracy blizzards. Shh. Yeah, shush. this fight gets really, really problematic if you miss any of your blizzards. You know, safety yeah, strategies. It's not like used terrifying in the sense that, uh, like, you don't instantly die because the dragon can just like spam agility yeah. and stuff. <coughs> uh, not in this game. Later. Well, first off, Dragonite kills you. It uses outrage. Dragonite does. Um, yeah, yeah. But the dragon I don't, doesn't do anything. I don't either. remember what the dragonairs do. They don't do a lot of damage, but they probably do no hyper beam. The second dragonair, I think, is uh, I think it safe. It knows safeguard, so it safeguards first before uh, outraging you. Uh, but uh, the first yeah. dragonair will uh, is more likely to outrage you. It doesn't kill from. Like, you have to be pretty low for it to kill you. Um, and at which point, you would have already probably healed on Gyarados, so you're not in range to die to Aerodactyl. Uh, it's slow, but it's not terrible. Dragonite can be. Yeah. Uh, and we, we use an elixir there. It's basically only for Blizzard. 
Uh, we need a couple more blizzards for this fight. That's, I think you like just barely have enough surfs for the entirety of the Elite Four without the Elixir. But, you know, with since we're Elixir anyway, we have infinite surfs. Effective. Infinite surfs. Okay, so we need to set up three <laughs> X specials and an X speed. This Pidgeot also knows sand attack, so we're going to use a guard spec to block that. We hope it uses sand attack. That's the good move. Or feather dance, but that's really rare. Aerial ace is not the good move. Yeah, it is faster. The higher faster. HP you are, the more likely it is yeah. to use sand, so it's, it kind of compounds on itself. It's fa It's a faster strat. You, you generally got to get one of the two. You either end up in torrent, uh, which can be, uh, you can use that to your advantage, but it's, uh, you ha generally will have to heal and therefore it's slower. Mm -hmm. And, but if you get a bunch of sands, you're at max HP and you're le way less likely to have to heal. So I, I got only aerial aces there. So I was able to <laughs> skip and, uh, an X spec because uh, I'm in torrent. Uh, and then we blizzard for our life here. All right. Let nice. me tell you, clicking Blizzard on this Venusaur is like the most stressful thing in the world when you're on PV pace. <laughs> Sometimes it uses growth, so you get an extra chance, but, uh... Yeah, the Venusaur is doing? definitely the biggest issue in this fight, it kills me. And once you're fa but once you're past it, you're not- you're still not quite out of the woods. Things can still go a little bit wrong. I have to hit two more blizzards. I normally would only have to hit one more, but because I only have a one spec. The issue with the Alakazam, if you only have two X, two specs and you're not in Torrent, uh, it it lives half the time and then just murders you. Uh, so. This just kills me with Thrash most of the time. Let me heal. Would have lived on one. <laughs> Not that it matters, because it's a two-shot. And then there's one last thing that can happen. Uh, this Arcanine will use extreme speed, almost certainly, and if it crits... You, like... You uh, actually, it would have no, to be a I tank a crit. I tank a crit. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> Oftentimes, a crit from this will kill you, but uh, I have just enough HP to where I should tank it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, with the level up, for sure. If I was mild, maybe not. Not his defense one. And, and that that's, is, the, that's the game. Yeah. That is GG's. Uh, I'm just barely missing sub 210. Ah. <laughs> Two deaths. I would have gotten it if I didn't risk, uh, I get, er, uh, Lorelei. Oh, well. Still a good yeah. time. World record is, like we said before, two hours and 56 seconds. So, uh, within 10 minutes of record with, like, 15 safety saves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, that's really good. Uh, I believe time is uh, fade to black uh, yeah. at the end it, of Hall it's, of Fame. Yeah, it's the fade to black after Hall of Fame. I'll, uh, I'll give you a scuffed countdown. <laughs> not, not this fade to black. Uh, the, yeah. The, the one coming up here. Yeah, you get a nice nice little uh, ceremony with the Blastoise, the big turtley boy that brought you all the way here. Just the Blastoise, that's it. No one else. Yeah. Now, the one, the tiny Five, bird that you made fly four, around everywhere. Three, two, one, time. GG. Very nicely done. Congrats. Yeah, let's go, Wave Warrior. Uh, again, everybody in chat, if you're not already following Wave Warrior, definitely follow him because he's uh, on the quest for the Pokemon Gen 3 world record sweep. And uh, this is the last category you need. Yeah. So if you want to see and him, all do more three of, this. of my other records are actively under attack. <laughs> so you, you better hurry. You got, you got to follow I'm, this man I'm right trying, now. I'm trying, man. Can't hit Mega Kick. <laughs> As I'm sure a lot of people now know, this category can be very brutal. Yeah, so, maybe, I think we've all learned that from this run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any, uh, any shout outs you want to do with? Uh, yeah. I mean, first off, shout out to you for hosting this. Shout out to G Shark and Swift for uh, providing any amount of char charisma this run. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, just the entire Pokemon Speedrun community. There's so many of us all spread apart across different gens, and a lot of people cross gens. Uh, 
I mean, I've, I've been doing this for about five years now, and I've met a lot of really close friends in that time. So that was... uh, what can I say? I enjoy doing this. I don't enjoy yeah. dying, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Any uh, any shouts for G Shark? Uh, no, uh, I mean, shout like, out the whole community. That's kind of kind of. Would you like me to list? Yeah, would you like me to go down the list? I can pull up. The, uh... <laughs> I mean, shout out uh, shout outs to the people who are still uh, putting in a lot. Of, I've mainly been this is really the only game I've run, but uh, shout out to the people who are still putting in some big record attempts on all the gen th one through three categories because those are like slowly getting more and more out of reach and it's still cool to see people kind of grinding towards the top shout outs to u-wave mock wing math genius um grow gear and yuji toe are doing are like grinding out that red uh just like a lot of cool people are just doing these really insanely hard things and really putting their most into these grinds and it's awesome to watch. Yeah. Shout out to Shiru666 who has the record in this category. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll shout out Mockwing, Matthews, and Gunner, and Blue Magma who are all actively trying to uh, stop the sweep from happening. <laughs> uh, there might be more I'm forgetting in those categories, but uh, yeah. And Everyone mentioned is an excellent runner, and you should follow them if you're at all interested in any of this. Yo, shoutouts to Wave. I don't know if you know that guy. Yeah. He's pretty cool. <laughs> if you aren't like following him, you should probably follow him. I mean, I know he's I know he's kind of like yeah. unknown to people, but <laughs> really good at this game, and you should definitely go give him a follow. And uh, is someone else going for the record in this? <laughs> yeah, his name is Wave. <laughs> um. I, I know he think... says he doesn't have a lot of charisma, but uh, he's he can he's still very entertaining. No, this I, man I, I promise. Riz, okay, let's be real. <laughs> oh <my> yeah. God. <laughs> um, but, uh, if you are yeah, good. Sorry, uh, if you are interested in running this game, feel free to join the Gen One Through Three Discord. There is tons of very helpful people there, as well as there's tons of like resources and guides on SRC. If you're a bit shy, like I can be sometimes when trying to get into new speedrunning communities. Yeah. There's also a ton of resources in the Discord, which is why I absolutely recommend joining it. Uh, Do it. Join. The, 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 the Discord is tends to be where the most up to date stuff is. True. Awesome. And also, yeah, follow Switzerland and G Shark as well. They both stream on Twitch. Their uh, their names are their handles on Twitch, so you just drop them both follows. And uh, before we end the broadcast for the evening, I know it's already over. So sad. Uh, I just wanted to make one last announcement that. Uh, Tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, Games Done Quick Express, GDQX, live from TwitchCon, benefiting Able Gainer, Gamers. A nice weekend-long uh, speedrun marathon. Uh, we'll be going... Uh, I, actually, I think... Yeah, the schedule is on the GDQX command, so I'll type that in chat. So if you go check the command out, go to the website, you can see the schedule. And uh, we'd love to see you pop in throughout the weekend. A lot of cool runs scheduled, a lot of really awesome uh, runners out there in Vegas right now preparing for their runs. I'm super excited to watch a bunch of them. Uh, so definitely, definitely tune in tomorrow for that. Yeah, you should definitely watch it because uh, without GDQX, people like Etchy wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's how I got into Pokemon Speed running. I saw a Pokemon run at GDQX. But thank you again to Wave Warrior. I promise uh, I'll, I'll drag him back here one day to do a round two speedrun of this. I, I keep trying to get him to do it. It'll happen eventually. Um, and thank you all so much for watching. We will be back tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. Pick a day where I'm not working and I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> do. Goodbye, everybody. Just ditch your